Hello, everybody, <laughs> and welcome to High Rollers Dungeons and Dragons! Woo! 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 I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and I am joined, as always, by my delightful cast of companions and friends and allies. We have... We got Rhiannon, we've Hello. got Trot, we've got Kim. Hello. Everyone's wearing their jumpers. This is jumper side I'm today. Not jumper. Jumper side. This is a shirt. Yep. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a shirt, isn't it? It's looked a bit like a jumper. It's got a collar, look. There's yeah, the collar. Yeah, I see that now. Yes. Yeah. It's got bugs on, on the other over. side, we've got Tom and Katie. Who are kind of, it's like a cardigan, a hoodie. It's not quite jumper. Jumper Very now. Cozy. <laughs> yeah, it's a jumper now, that's yeah. it. If you close a cardigan, it's a jumper. Yeah. Smoking jacket. Right. Ooh. Enough silliness. Shut up. Oh. It's time for announcements. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that's right. We've got a few. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an announcement, that's a disaster. What? That's like a baby sneeze. Ah! <laughs> so, Carry on. we've got a couple of announcements. Uh, first thing to mention, Kim, I'm going to let you have that drink because I'm going to throw it to you in a minute. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, finish up that drink. Because the first thing we've got to talk about is today's episode is sponsored. Uh, we have our first Campaign 3 sponsor. Yeah. Um, we are sponsored by Afterlight Comics with their new Kickstarter, Tales Unbound. Kim, tell us about it. No pressure. Hey, you there. Do you want to get into the world of D&D? I yes. have no idea where to start because there's a lot of books. Where do I start so, here? Uh, the, uh, the story, character, nightmare. encounters. Do I roll for that? Well, Afterlight Comics have a solution for you. They have just launched their Kickstarter, their 40, uh, 40th Kickstarter. Wow. wow. Tales Unbound. Veterans. And they have combined <clears throat> their love of Stop folklore. It. <laughs> and D&D so and, and created a deck of cards. Oh, um, tell me more. Well, they Tom have... Tom likes cards. <laughs> I do like cards. The cards are inspired by British, Slavish and American folklore. Uh, we do have some assets somewhere that can come up on the screen. Um, and basically, they Ooh. help you... There we go. Ooh. They help Ooh. you craft your epic tale. So they loosely broken down into Act 1, 2 and 3 cards. Um, and they help you with story. They help you with prompts. They help you with creature nice. encounters. Oh, yeah. The Baba Yaga. So yeah, like I said, British, American and Slavic folklore. It's all on their Kickstarter, which is live right now. <gasps> Afterlight Comics as well, who are behind <laughs> this. They are a wonderful team. Um, and the Kickstarter is ready to go. Basically, the product is ready to go. So they've got everything developed. Um, they just need the Kickstarter to hit its goal. And then it's ready to print and package themselves. Um, and they're very experienced with Kickstarters. So yeah. this, is a, yeah. this is a good, a good one to get for. It's, it's a, a safe bet. bet. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So check out the link in chat. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the video description. Uh, and also, I believe that uh, the developers from Afterlight, Joey, will be in chat uh, answering Ooh, your questions if you have it. any. They're right. very we love lovely it. humans. Hello. They are the Hi. best human beings. We, and thank you for sponsoring this episode. Yes, thank we you. really like working, especially with uh, folks who produce like this kind of content. You know, on the small scale, not always the big company. It's nice to support folks who've just you've got real passion for it. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're going to do here. Um, so that's a good one. Go and check out that link. Check out the Kickstarter. Uh, ask Joey any chat if you've got questions they in chat. They are definitely in chat. Joey's definitely in chat. Definitely in chat. Yeah. As you've got like <laughs> comics. So bombard them with questions. Bombard yes. them. And click that link. Look at that Kickstarter. I want this I funded. It. Oh. I love the energy. <laughs> fund it. Fund it. Angry. Well, I want it, so yes. I can't have it until uh, it's funded. So hurry up and fund it, please. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> well, we're not impressive. <laughs> uh, quite impressive, but... Um, but. Go and fund that Kickstarter, but make sure you save some pennies because also uh, this stream, uh, for to this stream and next stream, we will be fundraising for the Jingle Jam. Yeah. And our, our chosen charity uh, is Calm, which is the Campaign Against Living Miserably. Uh, there is a donation link in chat. Uh, our usual donation chat commands are going to be changed. Um, so if you want to do, keep that in mind, if you click on the normal donation, it's going to go to the Tiltify page for the Jingle Jam campaign. What is the Jingle Jam? It is a big charity event that runs all for the first two weeks of December. Um, there are many other streamers out there doing it. It's a big campaign with a whole bunch of different charities. We are focusing on Calm. Uh, if you donate £35 or over, you get a whole bundle of a games! Collection. A collection! £1,000 worth of games. Game scripts. 
<laughs> it's a collection of games. It's a collection. Collection of games. Games collection. Um, it is a collection of games that you can get for thirty-five pounds or over, um, and you get all of them. You get access to them. There's some great ones in there. Uh, Aces and Adventure, I know, is a pretty good one in there. You got Tabs, uh, totally accurate battle simulator. Yeah, There's a few yeah. good couple of good games on there. Yeah. Um, so go and check that out. If you don't know about uh, Calm, a campaign against living misery, they take a stand against suicide. Uh, this means standing against feeling like shit, standing up to stereotypes, and standing together to show life is always worth living. Uh, 125 losses are lost each week to suicide. Calm exists to change this, and we do it by provoking conversation, running life-saving services, and bringing people together so they reject living miserably, get help when they need it, and all of that good stuff. They're very, yeah. very lovely humans yes, at Calm. Yes. They're such a lovely charity, so please help us raise lots of money. Yes, uh, we would seriously love to raise money and if you use the link in our chat that is our campaign link so there is a, a wider jingle jam like campaign and page but if you use our link it will let them know that this is money that high rollers has raised and specifically for common we'd love to like make a really big impact and really show that like we're supporting this so please if you can donate uh, generously and yes. get that games collection for 35 pounds yes um, well done uh, and uh, in the break, I will read a little bit more about where your Jingle Jam money will go to. But there's a lot of other things to mention, so I, I'm not going to do that now. But speed run. Support calm. Speed run. Uh, speed run. Um, two more. One, the next one, uh, these are very quick. Uh, they're kind of more like announcements, really, than like things to like promote and, and mention. Um, this next one's a pretty big one. Um, and that is that we are very excited to say that High Rollers is now, uh, and this is something that some of people might have guessed or figured out, but we are now completely independent. Uh, we'd like to express our eternal gratitude to the Yogs cast. They've been incredibly supportive of us over the years and gave us the opportunity to create this show and begin our journey. And they've been cheering us on the whole way. Um, but now as we launch with Campaign 3, we've built the studio. Uh, we are we're doing it alone. This is our new journey and we are now totally independent. We're making it all on our own. We're very excited to raise funds for the Jungle Jam. We're still going to be remain we're remaining very good friends. We still have a very close relationship with the Yogs cast on many individual levels as well. And we're still in it, having a good time. We're all good mates. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to let you guys know that this is now fully independent. Um, and that's why we are doing this as an independent uh, fundraiser for the Jingle Jam and not doing a main channel Jingle Jam stream as well. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that was happening. Um, and then the very last thing to mention is that this is live! It's a live episode! Yeah. It's live! It's live. Yeah. Um, it. Which means that we will be le reading donations at the end of this stream. So um, all of your donations that have been saved up over the last couple of weeks, we're going to yes. read those out. We're going to be reading out some of your Jingle Jam donations as well. And then we're also, if you have any personal donations direct to us, we're going to try and read those out as well. But it's a live, it's a live episode. We're live. We're back. Hooray! Yeah. There will be donations at the end of the episode. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Um, and yeah, don't forget, so big ones there. Go and check out Afterlight Comics with their Kickstarter, uh, their Kickstarter Tales Unbound. And then also please check out our Jingle Jam campaign page for Calm as well. Oh yes, did you guys want to show off one last very one quick last thing? Yes. Yeah, we have been given these incredible pieces of art, one of a kind pieces of art uh, from Omega Sama, who is a lovely member of our Look community. They are stunning. These are like so physical incredible. paintings as well. These aren't digital, these are like actual Beautiful. physical pieces of yeah. art. This is all uh, characters from, if you don't know, these are characters from our previous campaign of Rois, our second campaign. This doesn't do it justice. No, it really, really doesn't. Um, so we'll probably take pictures of these and put them on our our socials because they're just incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you for this um, wonderful for this, Omega Sama. Thank um, you. This is going yeah, in this my is the best. Yeah. I there was one for me as well. Uh, Omega did one of my my LARP character Morrigan, but it is uh, at home at the moment, so I didn't have mine in. Um, but yes, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, wonderful gift. And that is it. That's a, we haven't had announcements for a while. We had a few. Had them built up. Um, had them built yeah. up. Back but yeah, some really good ones. Uh, we hope you're all excited about it. But now it's time to play that intro and start playing some D and D. Hell yeah. yeah.
A group of strangers arrived in the village of Burnell, a small homely settlement in the region of Northvale in the province of Caldra. As their paths begin to cross, they are thrown together in the search for a trio of criminals, which leads them up into the mountains and into Blackrock Mine. Inside, they fought against strange alien creatures called Bellamorphs and encountered a tiefling, also known as a tiefling in Althea, called Caliphrus, who told them about a stolen relic and offered to make a deal, which the party rejected. Reaching the bottom of the mine, they found the criminals and the mine's foreman, Marion, who had lost control of the relic, the Hand of the Lightless Pilgrim. After the battle, the relic was whisked away by an invisible Caliphrus, but with the creatures defeated and the criminals apprehended, the party retru- returned to Burnell and were rewarded with a bounty and a duke's favour. And that is where we pick up today's episode, in fact. Mm-hmm. Um, Boy. I believe that at the end of the last episode, uh, there's a very slight rewinding of time almost a little bit here because I believe that we basically were going to start it with you guys sort of heading out of the village. But I wanted to give you guys an opportunity if there was any last minute things that you wanted to do, um, anything like buying supplies and things like that, and also set the scene up where you guys are making your way. Because I believe that you had all agreed to head towards uh, the largest settlement, the town of Ashen's Rest, uh, which is to the south, uh, more in the heartlands of, of Caldra. Uh, you were going to be accompanied by um, uh, Captain uh, Lucas Vicaro uh, offered to send an escort of some soldiers with you, um, as well as uh, Authorita uh, Zaron Tekis would be traveling with you back to Ashen Rest as well. Um, but we awake, uh, it is early morning. We can say that you have had things like breakfast and all of that's been taken care of as part of the celebrations and thanks uh, from the village of Burnell for you being here. Um, but yeah, we kind of start and begin with you guys here, ready to uh, begin on your journey. So the, the Duke's favor included 125 smackaroos as well, right? Well, that was the bounty for the, the bounty, recovering the yes. criminals. The actual Duke's favor is a separate thing. Um, but yeah, the uh, the bounty uh, for the captured, you captured two of the criminals alive and one dead, um, and you were paid a bounty of 125 gold, but in, in rubies, basically. That wasn't uh, our fault. <laughs> no. is, is the market still about in, in Burnell? It is, yeah. There's not just a market. There is actually, there are like brick and mortar stores here as well. Um, and you can, you know, Burnell is a kind of small like village, like an outskirts village, but it's a promising one. It's a growing one, quite prosperous. It's on a made trade road. Um, so there are various merchants and things here as well. So if there were any supplies that you were going to need on your journey, um, and this is uh, probably a good point. In fact, actually, no, I've got to get into the habit of this. There's one thing we have to do before anything else. Rewinding again. What? You rewinding again? No, this is a thing. This happens behind the scenes, Thomas. Mm. Oh. Because it is time to determine the crucible of fate. This is the thing we have to remember at the beginning of every session. So uh, this is an, a, a, a new mechanic that I've introduced to the campaign, and we introduced it in the last episode. There have been some slight tweaks. Yes. Uh, just because this is going to be an evolving mechanic, after speaking with the team, looking at it myself, and taking on some feedback, there have been some slight adjustments. Nothing too major, more in the way that the Crucible can be used. Uh, but the way this works is I need all of you to roll a d6, and I, in fact, too, will also roll a d6. Okay. Uh, okay. And on a result of a 1 to 3, uh, you will add a, pu- a dice to my side of the crucible. On a roll of a 4, 5, or 6, you will add a dice to your side of the crucible. Um, and so we will determine that. 5. Ah! Ah! Alright, ah. right, keep in mind. Keep in mind. So, yeah. Katie, uh, 1 from you. Uh, a two from me. A two so from you, so two side. so far in the pool for me. So far, so good. Uh, Kim? Five. Five? Yeah! Three. A five, oh. a three. So another one in my pool. And then Rhiannon? A one. A one? <laughs> <laughs> luckily, I rolled a four, so that is two yeah, to you. Two on our side, four, four on your to side. You guys. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, I will terrible. go over briefly, just because people at home might be interested. So the way that it's changed ever so slightly is just how the Crucible dice are spent, basically. Um, so now, uh, basically, uh, any uh, various points, you guys can add a d6 to certain things. I can add a d6 to certain things, but they are different because of the way that game balance works and, and the mechanics and the maths of 5e works. You guys as players can uh, spend a crucible uh, or crucible or fate dice uh, in the, one of the following ways. Um, you can add a d6 to an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw except death saving throws. It's the one thing you can't do. Um, but the die must be added before 
the re result of the roll is made. Yes. So before I tell yeah. you whether it succeeds or fails, you have to choose yeah. to add it before that's you roll. Different. Right? Okay. So that's slightly different. Um, you can only do that once. You can't add like spend three to add three d six either. Sure. It's like you spend one, you get one d six. Right? Um, you can use a crucible point to re-roll the re-roll the result of a random event or other similar roll requested by the DM. So for example, on a journey, and you guys you know trigger an event and you roll low and you think well that might be bad. You can spend a fate point to re-roll that dice and see if you get a different result, right? I have interest. Do we know the result of the journey before we roll no. it? Or is it like we see the result and then see we're the like, result okay. and be like, ah, that's probably it could be, be bad. bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. Um, you can also spend a crucible dice to add a minor beneficial element to a scene or an environment. For example, to add a piece of cover to a battlefield, establish a positive connection with a non-hostile NPC, or to create a timely distraction or find a simple common item when searching an area. So this is your way of almost having a bit of control over a scene and being like, oh, well, this merchant, I actually have met him before and like we've got a good relationship. I want to spend a point so that we've got a positive connection to this NPC, right? Or, oh, can I search this area to see if there's uh, a key to this door? Mm. You might spend a point and maybe a you find a copy. you can throw, it. like we did last time. Exactly, yeah. right? Uh, and then a couple of interesting ones. Uh, the, la the next way that you can spend a point is to activate something called a destiny ability or power. I'm not going to tell you any more about that because that might be something that you find later on. Um, but there okay. might be items or special boons that you guys might acquire that will have something called the Destiny ability, and they require Crucible or Fate Points to activate them. Hmm. Like, oh. Ooh, like a limit break, yeah. Kind of. Or like, you know, imagine like a, or, or like a mini legendary action, but for you guys or something yeah, similar, right? Cool. Um, and then the last one, I think this is, uh, this is kind of inspired by how we've played the game in the past. Um, the last way that you can do it is to request a Devil's Bargain from the DM. And the Devil's Bargain... <laughs> Calm down. I know. <laughs> Devil's Bargain is an instance where a player wants to bend the rules or the narrative of a situation to attempt something unusual. Trot and Ree have often, and Kim as well, have often done a lot of this. Fine, sweet DM. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, this is the sweet DM, could I do this thing which isn't quite in the rules but like is something a bit unusual? You yes, can spend a point you. and that will be like, yep, if you spend a fake point, you can try and do something that doesn't guarantee you a success. It's just the attempt, right? Amazing. So those are the ways you can do it. But you get to choose when you want to make that call and, and request it from me, right? Cool. Now, <laughs> the way... I'm into that. Can I do that now? I want to do it now. But it, but you probably will need a situation for okay. it. Do a backflip. Uh. Um, <laughs> but just for reference, the way that I can spend them is a little bit differently. So I can spend a Crucible die to add a d6 to a damage roll or an ability check. So I don't ever boost my attacks or saving throws, okay. but I can oh. boost my damage rolls. Okay. Um, and there's a reason for that. That's all connected to the maths and the scaling of 5e. Yeah. It's much more narratively exciting exciting for me to do damage to you mm. rather than never miss. Um, I think that that's more exciting yeah. is yeah. for you to be like, oh, fuck, I just took loads of damage. Yeah. Whereas for you guys, it's less fun to miss. So boosting your attacks is better, cool. right? Yeah. It's that kind of mentality. I like it. Um, I can also spend them to add a minor complication to a oh, scene no. or an environment. <laughs> for example, to destroy a piece of cover or terrain. Oh, no. nice. Establish a negative connection between an NPC and a PC. Oh, oh, this is your former boyfriend or former girlfriend. Like This is somebody you've had a romantic relationship with or this is somebody who you fucked over in a deal or like something like that, perhaps like. Cool. Um, or I can use it to create an instant of bad luck. So for example, you guys might be like, well, can we spend a fate point to distract this guard? Yeah, great. He like turns away at the right moment. You scoot past, make a stealth check, that kind of thing. But I might be like, yeah, as you guys are creeping through the manor, uh, I'm going to spend a fate point to have a butler burst into the, like come into the room, you know, to do something, and like you weren't expecting them to be there. Like add a complication, basically. Sure. Nice. Um, and then finally, I can also activate destiny abilities and powers because maybe monsters and NPCs oh. might have them as well. Yeah. This and for amazing. every one that's spent, it goes to the other side. As well. Exactly. So it's going to keep that one. So you spend one, it comes to me. I spend one, it comes to you guys. So right? in our current instance of two on our side, four on your side. Yes. We're not <laughs> two. Maybe. But it's also the other point thing is the, the in the last episode, we used it a lot because it was a brand new exciting thing. Mm -hmm. There are probably going to be episodes where this probably doesn't get touched much at all just because of the nature of a scenario. Mm -hmm. But there might be ones where it's constantly changing, like in a battle or something like that. We might constantly be spending them. But this is the way that we're going to run it for now, moving forward. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to the narrative implications. Mm, yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. And like again, really cool. keep in mind as well, the, this is not a democracy. As an individual <laughs> player, you can just be like, None I want I want a devil's bargain, Mark, and you just spend a point. As long as you've got them to spend, you don't need the rest to vote on it. Yeah. You can just choose to do it. Really cool. Cool. All right. Um, so with that that out of the way, we've got the crucible established. Uh, so we kind of jump back into the scene. Um, 
the you can look over and the escort of soldiers that's been assembled for you. Uh, Captain Lucas Vaccaro has uh, set aside young Cade, the young half elf man who I think you guys had interacted with a little bit in Burnell, um, is uh, accompanied by two other young looking soldiers, a young uh, female t- uh, tiefling um, and a young male wild heart with wolf like traits. Uh, so they've mm-hmm. got a little bit more. Um, uh, they've got like wolf ears and sort of a wolf tail and some like patches of fur on their arms and things like that. Ooh. And then there is an older uh, uh, soldier-looking fellow, a human, um, who has like a sergeant's lapel, uh, like a kind of insignia that shows they are of a higher rank, who's just a human, bald head, kind of bit of stubble on his chin, that kind of thing. Looks a little bit like Commander Shepard. Uh, oh. Kind of looking fellow. Um, and they're being assembled as your escort um, and Zaron Tekis, and they look like they're preparing things like camping supplies and rations and basically preparing themselves for this journey ahead. But this isn't um, like they're not covering our travel. Like we'll no, 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 no. They are literally just there to provide you with a, an armed escort. So if we were to restock basically what we had before, not up to 10 torches, because again, fucking ridiculous. Right. Um, if we were to restock our supplies and bits, what sort of cost would that be? Well, I mean, well, I think I would play this out as like, wait, what do you want? Like, you've got the mar- the market here in, in um, Burnell is uh, mainly focused on, like, local artisans. There's lots of, like, produce and farmers. Um, there are people that are selling, like, clothing and, and items like that. Um, but you do notice that there is at least one major kind of general store in mm. the town. It's just off the market square, but it's a two-story building. It's got like a, a foundation level and a first floor, wooden first floor with a lovely kind of slate roof. Um, the slate roof is done in these beautiful kind of red and pink tiles. Um, and it looks not too wealthy. It's not upper, like, you know, very fancy. It looks very comfortable and well furbished. Uh, well furbished. Um, and there is a sign out front that says uh, Sterling and Sons Supplies. Um, but the market as well has independent traders, like very small little tents and little market stalls or or like uh, dear sweet uh, dwarven lady with a little blanket and a little stone statues. Um, so it really depends what you're looking for. Like uh, you tell me what you want to buy or where you want to go and we can play out like see what you guys want. Because uh, hmm. I don't think so. Because I think some of you have been traveling on the road for a while, but I don't think any of you really have like uh, like well, supplies for it. Yeah, you've kind of just got the basics, right? right like so I ran rations and things like that. Um, um, actually, I only had one day of rations, so that is- so that would be gone. Because yeah, you would have been traveling here yeah. and stuff like that. Um, also, keep in mind things like rations. If you buy them, we're talking like like trail mix yeah. like we're talking like cereal bars it's not the most ap- <laughs> yeah jerky it's not the most appetizing food sure. um Dried. it will it will provide you the mo- the bare minimum of re- you know nourishment okay. um and rations can go bad rations and like they can be damaged and stuff in journeys and things like that as well so, so. i had five right mm-hmm. and we went to the cave and back, the mines and back. Mm-hmm. How many rations you're at? Well, it, I think that that wouldn't have been too bad because you can do that journey in about a day. But I think that your travel to get here to Burnell probably would have cost you like two or three. I okay. think. Um, Xanthius, you probably would be nearly out of rations because you I, you basically spent it all getting. Yeah. You, you were in a bad way when you left. Yeah. Um, Gruff, I think, would be a bit more prepared for it because he's a bit more of a worn traveler and is used to foraging and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think any rations you have on your couch sheet, you can keep those. Uh, those oh. would probably be there. Uh, yeah. But again, we're talking like dried mackerel. Like you are like living off like, you know, lard biscuits and like proper like ice heart rations. A lot of like dried fish, I think. Yeah, yeah. dried fish or like, you know, those kind of really stale flat oat cakes that like stuff that can preserve for a there's long a, time. There's a pasty that he's had and it's quite flat and smushed and probably a bit moldy, but he can't bring himself to let it go because he just can't find pasties down here. Nice, there you go. Ice heart pasties, yeah, yeah, famous. Yeah. Trey <laughs> Moro pasties. Yeah, they pasties they are. Yeah. Trey Moro, famous for its yeah. pasties, in fact. <laughs> you can go, if you go to a station in Kelscaris, you can get uh, Trey Moro pasties. <laughs> In a little players. stand. <laughs> That's yeah. what we're famous for. Mm. <laughs> um, Ophelia, I think the same for you. Like you've been traveling, you would have been prepared for a little bit of a journey, You're but you've you you've spent like yeah. you've probably spent like Balls. two of your rations. Like if, if you have any, I don't yeah. know if you do. Um, okay. Get you a little blood boy. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, Daisy, you're used to traveling around, so, yeah, for you, you'd probably have a, a, a maximum amount or whatever you've currently got. Can't presume. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can't I imagine I would probably forage along the way as well. Yeah, yeah. Bits and pieces. And... Yeah, that can be a thing that can be done. So, I'm, I, Xantius has a history of trading and being a sure. trader from Rust End. So, uh, I mean, would I know the cost of rations? Like, 
How much can they really be? Uh, you you would know a vague price, but like you said, like every merchant's going to change it. Um, yeah. Generally, in, in this setting, I am going to be charging more for items just because the yeah. the base player you know handbook prices are a little inflation. low. Um, yeah, there's wait, a bit of inflation. Just wait until the stats um, switch. Stats but yeah, like switch. it depends, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> carry on. <laughs> you know, like your days, like the kind of trail rations that you guys have, like this hard tack, like these like nuts and berries, you know, things that can be preserved well jerky. It, it's not too pricey. You're probably looking at sort of like you know. I think it's like one gold per day normally. Um, so oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. I think that's well, roughly what it is. Well, it is a, an expensive land. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 And just in general, prices of everything are increased in general. Honestly, I think just it's... Money gold, is a weird thing. Gold dragonborns, they're really making a mess of the economy. Everything's more expensive in the south. It's well. your yeah. fault. Are you gold? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's your yeah, fault. It's... No. <laughs> but one thing you might want to consider, this is going to be uh, our first sort of in-campaign journey. Um, I am going to do things like when you guys take a long rest, if you are outside and camping, like, I want to know what that camp's going to look like. Do you have tents? What kind of protections against the elements do you have? Do you take time to, like, cook a meal? What do you do? Like, you know, I'm going to kind of go more into it a little bit with that. Um, so you might want to consider that. Like, uh, I have things like weather might be a factor. Like, if you guys suddenly catch yourselves out and you're in a downpour of rain and you don't have suitable ways of protecting or you've not found a good campsite where you can shelter yourself from the rain, might make your journey more exhausting or harder to finish and things like that. So, oh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna add a little bit more of the survival kind of element to this. Okay. And like, try and okay. I'm not gonna like nickel and dime you over arrows and rations and things like that. But, you know. but as they're known to say in Ice Heart, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. Yeah, exactly. It's Got it. In Scotland. <laughs> It's almost like there's a little bit of uh, Scottish yeah. influence uh, from uh, my good friend Steve, who helped me write some of the Ice Heart stuff. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, so Steve do we Cook. also know how long of a journey it's going to be to? Thanks. You, I would say, uh, you and Daisy Xanthius would have a vague idea, okay. um, because you are from this region and you have a little bit of knowledge. Yeah. I think that for Ro Rowan might also, because Rowan's kind of a traveller, right? Rowan kind of wanders around and is a bit of a nomad and has travelled around a fair yep. bit. Um, Ophelia and Gruff probably wouldn't have any cl anywhere close to an idea. This is no. foreign land. This is so far from home for Gruff. Um, so I'd say that the three of you, Rowan, Zan, and uh, and Daisy, can make a nature check. This is just a, almost like a geography, kind of like roughly how long do you think this journey would be? Uh, a what check, sorry? Nature. Nature. Mm -hmm. uh, watch this. Watch this drive. Eight. Not really used to it. You've probably never... You, you remember... You... Natural 20. Natural 20, that's perfect. <laughs> Wasted. Um, so I think for for Xanthius, uh, yeah, like you probably never made your way to Ash and Rest. It was a bit too populated. Yeah. You knew that there might be, mm -hmm. you know, difficulties with that and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, not really one that you're familiar with. What Out of interest, what did Rowan get on a nature? I didn't even roll. Didn't roll yet. Didn't roll yet what sorry. are you doing? The roll a three. Okay. Uh, <laughs> probably this is an unfamiliar region. You're used to traveling around, but Six. you just don't know the the land around here. It's not one you've like come to learn yet. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, for Daisy, I think that this is um, you know when Xanthia, you know you're kind of thinking about that, and Nim is in your head uh, and is already kind of thinking about this journey, um, and Nim would probably say to you, uh, I suspect it will be. Four to five days, little one, uh, on on the journey. Make sure you're well. Make sure you have enough provisions. And now that we are traveling with others, uh, we might want to invest in some equipment. Uh, we're a little more fragile than when I was traveling. So make sure you're protected. Okay. Well, what sort of things do you think I should get? Because I was thinking that it's probably going to be cold, so I should definitely get a giant, giant blanket. Yes, a warm blanket. Really big one, so, so that I can just like roll in it and it would be all around me like a little cocoon. Yes, that would work, but we may also want to find things to make a shelter. Uh, a large uh, blanket might work. We can use some poles and things to uh, erect a tent. It is spring, so I don't think it will be too cold, but rain could be a problem. So one cocoon blanket and one tent blanket. Got it. Taking notes. And you just kind of hear that in your head. But yeah, like Daisy knows that it's about a four to five day journey. I wish we could have heard that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Cocoon! <laughs> um, but yeah, so what's what's everyone thinking? Let's um Ophelia and Rowan and Gruff, what about you guys? Like any any thoughts, anywhere you want to go, anything you want to do just before we set out from Burnell? Mm, I think Ophelia might do a little bit of 
well, shopping, browsing, pitying. Okay. In that wow. order? Who are you pitying? Wow. Who are you pitying? Just everyone. Just the, the people who have to work at the, sh the stores. Right. Oh, right, I see you. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, I think it's that distinction of, like, it's the people, like, you know... My heart. <laughs> Ouch. There probably wouldn't be an issue with, like, in Osseus, the idea of, like, running a shop would be okay because yeah. you're managing it and you're supervising it, but it's the people who have to do things like stocking shelves oh, or, like, yeah. carting it's heavy goods money. around. You probably see, like, a farmer's, like, son and he's got, like, a big wagon loaded with, like, turnips and cabbage and he's dragging it into, like, his dad's stall and you're just, oh, oh your heart well. bleeds, you oh. know. Um, um, as <laughs> Terribly you walk around. hot day for lugging around such huge burdens. Oh, it's, it's not too bad, Miss. He's just kind of kind of. It's like, you know, it's spring. It will be worse in the summer. That's why mm. we try and do as much as we can now. But it's it's not too bad. I'm used to it. Um, oh, he's quite quite a, quite quite a strapping, it. you know, young man. Like, mm. yeah. It's sad you have to get used to it. It's sad that you can't just do what you enjoy. Uh, he kind of is like, oh no, no, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to help Daddy. But there's now like a doubt of like. Well, it does. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to do something just else. Ruined his day. It's like, it's like, well, I would. I would. It would be nice to go. I'd like you know, if I can get a break to go to the tavern and have a drink. That would be quite nice. Um, well, the Grey Father would smile fondly upon you if you were to do that. The who? Oh, the Grey Father. Trevor, now you get over here with him. I need to do it now. Oh, sorry, Miss. I go go. <laughs> like trails off as his. Think of what I said. <laughs> As he kind of gets pulled away by his dad. He just stood there with Percival, just, you know, You're solemnly. You're start a cult by the Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Spreading the good word. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we Make see Ophelia cult. kind of like, You're pitying the poor people of Burnell. Um, yeah. What about Rowan and Gruff? Anything from either of you guys that you Rowan want? Rowan wants to get some food for the road. Oh, yeah. What kind so, of stuff? Uh, well, he's got a rubies worth 125 gold, so... <laughs> 125 <laughs> gold's worth of food! Wow, well, sure. and supplies. Yeah. Well, well, you've got the right idea. Yeah, so what you can do um, for, for Rowan, like, you can go around... There's various market stores, they have different things. Like, you have baker with fresh breads and things like that. There is a butcher, like, doing cuts of meat and, like, wrapping it. Some of them are salted to be preserved on the road. Um, there are people selling, like, uh, fruits and things like that as well. And it's all very local stuff. Mainly in culture, you'd be looking at, like, grapes and berries are quite common here oranges uh, a few like you know kind of trees like that i mean this spring so it's kind of a good season for for some stuff strawberries that kind of stuff is quite common here um there is also uh, people that do like dairy products like cheeses and milks and stuff are all in this thing and the more of this stuff you buy like the more gold you spend on raw ingredients now you will potentially have to either you can either cook you can eat some stuff raw like bread and cheese and things like that but you can also try and use this stuff to cook and when you make camp you can try and give you your Ron's team a boost cook. yeah great you can uh, is there anything that Rowan thinks of, you know, that that you think Rowan would be drawn like to? Uh, an instance. Um, Somebody have a spare pen. I forgot. Oh, no, I've got it here. It's clipped to my DM screen. <laughs> um, he'd get the basics in. Uh, he's working on a 40, 40, 20 macro right now. So <laughs> protein, carb. <laughs> um, so probably some fish. Yeah. Um, freshly yeah, caught. You'd ask nearby. Groff, actually, if, um, if you've caught any fish recently for our, for our journey. Out of character, I do actually have a thing where I can fish and contribute. Like, there's a... Th I think you have a background feature, right? Background feature, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, where I can do that. So, but I'm guessing I probably wouldn't... You probably have haven't time. had time to do it yet, but it is something you can do on the road. Like, I'll mm. say that, like, if you are near a body of water, like a river or a lake or something like that, you can certainly try and fish for it. Um, but I don't think you would have any on you right no. now. But you could certainly help Rowan pick out. Like, there is yeah. a fishmonger here. There's a river nearby, and they're, they're selling, like, uh, you know, river fish, mm -hmm. like oh, trout and salmons. Like... <clears throat> Where's the voice? Where's the voice? Yeah, I Hello. Hello, my name's Gruff. <laughs> my name's Gruff. I, I know the, um, your name. <laughs> the, eye, the eye on this one, too cloudy. You want gills that are blood red. Right. Yes, fresh, really fresh. All my fish are fresh, I'll have you know. The eye on this one's a bit cloudy. That, that's a special, uh, it's a special cauldron fish, the cloudy-eyed kipper, that is. You, sir, <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are mocking me. I am, you're right, <laughs> sir, I am. I'm, it's a bit of a, I'll tell you what, I'll do a discount on that fish, half price. Take it off me hands. Pretty good deal. Okay. If we cook it tonight, I guess, we could make a nice broth oh, out of it. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll do a deal, I'll do a deal on that one. So how much would that be? Uh, he will, it will be like, I'll, I'll, like five fish. 
Five, yeah, I could do five fish for you, include that one, I'll do you a special deal. Fresher one. Fresh yeah, yeah, one. I'll get some fresher ones in there as well. I've got a lovely caught this morning. My boy caught him this morning. He brings out a kind of like a uh, like a a trout, like a kind of river trout, a nice fresh kind of one. Um, you, so for this, I would say, really, this is down to you. Like, so the way, rather me saying a specific price, you can say, I want to spend 10 gold on fish, right? And then that was the gold equivalent that you're going to have to use in your pot of cooking. Um, and the more you spend, the better ingredients you get. But I'll say five. Expensive. Five gold? A gold, a fish. Five GP of fish. Lovely. Noted. So yeah, he like packages up this quite fresh, lovely fish. He, you probably get like a little bit more than five for five gold. He like packages up some nice cuts of fish. Some of them are salted, so they'll last like longer in a journey. Like they're kind of pressed in salt and wrapped up and things like that. Um, provides it to you. Yeah. I whack them all in my little backpack. Little bag. Yeah. Um, Do you want to have anything to go with your fish? Any like veggies or? We need vegetables and potatoes. Teddies. Yeah. We call them teddies. Okay. That's a lovely name. <laughs> Tatties. I love that. Tatties? Teddies. Apparently it's Cornish for... Teddies. Taters. Teddies. Let's go get some teddies. <laughs> sure, and veggies. Yeah, you can find a local grocer. Um, how much gold of, of vegetables do you want to buy? I'll do... Um, for potatoes and veg. Yeah, it's the same thing. Let's do five and five again, so... So about ten gold of veg. Even though the so. meat should be more expensive, I like my tats. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, with the you get like a, a, a sack of veggies, like it's kind of like a bunch of potatoes, carrots, root vegetables, some parsnips, that kind of stuff, Good all kind of thrown in there. Stuff. Traveling stuff, and the, the vegetables will probably like potatoes will last you a long time. Like they're not going to go bad very quickly. The fish, the non-salted stuff, will go bad pretty quickly. Um, fresh vegetables and fruits will go bad pretty quickly, but they're delicacies as well, right? So okay, if you're done, that'll give you a uh, so that will be uh, like fifteen golds worth of cooking materials, yeah. basically done. Also, I want to get some condiments, so some uh, like herbs, uh, salt. Herbs and spices. Pepper. Herbs, spices, pepper. Mm -hmm. So things like that. So I'll spend five gold on little pouches of these things, you know, yep. like... Uh, yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yep. absolutely. Rowan wants to be salt bay. <laughs> so you have so yeah, you are, a skillet. So you'll have about twenty gold. Now that's the the next question. Are you proficient with cook's utensils? No. Oh. <laughs> do you have any cook's utensils? No. Well, you're gonna have to buy some. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Graf, do you have any cooking things? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, I do. Do you have like a mess kit or something? Oh, I might have a, a mess. A mess kit is like fork and knife and plates. It's not like everybody. cooking skillets and like mm. pots and pans and stuff. Oh. We're talking like full Samwise Gamgee, like, you know, ladle yeah. like slung the frying pan, a spat. Like, we're talking like, glang, glang, you know, that. Yeah, kind I'm going to see if I can buy. Or I might go back to our uh, Peony Inn. Yeah. And ask if they got any spare. Can <laughs> <laughs> hey, I take your frying pan with me? Can I borrow a frying pan? Uh, you go back and Adriana is like, no, Rowan, I need, I've, we've got any spare. Oh, okay. I've got a I, spare pan. I'm sorry for asking. No. Well, I mean, I mean, I could maybe, we've got some, I could go and buy new things and you can have the ones we have, but. Oh, uh, no. Where would you buy them from, though? Well, probably from, uh, from uh, Janja Sterling's, the, the, the big shop in town. Okay. They, they have plenty of things okay, like that. I'm sorry for that. I'm really sorry. I mean, you don't have to <laughs> apologize, but I just can't spare it. No, you know, I it's... didn't. I didn't think it through. You'd you... be put out with your kitchen and. <laughs> you so... apologize too much. Yes. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. She just like pats you on the arm. It's um, been lovely staying here, by the way. It's been lovely to have your music. I must thank you. It's been wonderful to have you uh, performing here. I'll come back. I hope so. I hope that you do, yes. Uh, but, you know, you've got a new exciting life. I heard that you you have a, the favor of yes. a duke and the money that you got from the bounty. You go and enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. Go and scoring places. Yes. Maybe, I mean, not that I, you've got a fabulous style, but, you know, maybe accessorize a little bit, oh. some, like, nice things. Some you know, stars. you're in culture. How you are perceived is very important Any here. Any recommendations? I think with your skin tone, you know, like a jet or an onyx, some black gemstones would look very... Very nice. Gemstones. Um, you I think silver. If you're going to go for jewelry, more silver than gold. Okay. Um, and maybe like a, you know, you've got this lovely scarf. Uh, but your fashion's pretty good. You know, it's pretty good. Oh. <laughs> Just make sure you get it cleaned. You know, I've not seen you clean it since you've been here. <laughs> get it cleaned and make sure there's no bad threads and rips and tears. But no, it's good. I will accessorize. Thank you. She just nods her head and like lets you go. Uh, yeah, and I'll head towards the yeah. 
that she... Uh, Janya Sterling's Janya Sterling. uh, is what she said, and she points in the direction of this big main shopping town, basically. I'm going to buy her on a little gemstone as well. Aww. Okay, sure. I'm going to feel out the ones that resonate with the individuals. Okay. Um, here, well, they did have the mine. You would probably find that um, the, there's a couple of soldiers uh, talking to, uh, Vicaro soldiers, talking to a little seller who's got like a stand with cut gemstones. Um, and they're interviewing them, talking about Marion, the foreman, asking questions about what happened and Ooh. if they have any connections. Um, but the, we'll the gem seller. In if there's any... uh, it, it's mainly like, you know. How long did you know? Did you know that Marion was dealing with these criminals? Like, have you ever seen them before? You know, how long has she been like, you know, acting suspiciously? Those kind of things that you come across. And the, the seller is, uh, uh, I uh, have a random table to see what uh, wish they are. Oh, uh, they are a um, uh, a tiefling as well, a tiefling, um, uh, and they're just saying, well, I, I can't say I ever noticed anything. Marion's always been very good to us. She's been she's been stressed lately, been working really hard. Something was clearly on her mind, but she's never, I never would have imagined her associating with criminals. Um, and he sort of is just like, no, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Uh, please excuse me, I, I think I have a customer, and he kind of turns, he's like, hello, can I help you? I wasn't listening. Uh, the soldiers like kind of look at you when you say that. He's like, no, no, I'm sure. Um, can I, is there something I can help you with? Do you mind if I feel your gemstones? <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not going to take them off with you, no. Um, I'll close my eyes and just use an index finger to feel each one. Sure. And just the, one finger. Just yeah. yeah. We are we are talking very small cut gemstones. These are like uh, yeah. very rough. Like this is a very small. This is not like a fancy jewelers or anything like that. Um, and if yeah, you, you could can... like super zoom in mm -hmm. to the tip of Roman's finger, the faintest. Tiniest touch on each sure. tiny gemstone. Sure. Um, there's and these are like uh, lower quality kind of gemstones. We're talking like uh, not like rubies and sapphires. Not We're talking Roman. more like uh, minerals, like um, you know, like uh, citrines and things like quartz. that. Quartz, that kind of stuff. And I think that you would probably be able to find like uh, a lot of it's like different colored like crystals, like quartz and and, and similar minerals. Um, and yeah, I think like if you spend what was it like about uh, yeah, you would probably spend about twenty gold. And we're talking like very small, like kind of little stones, really. Raw stones as well, not worked or anything. Um, you can spend about 20 gold and you can find one that seems to resonate with a similar energy or has like a familiar feel to, to each of the party. There's one which has almost like a cold, but like a refreshing spring feeling you almost get for this like one. one. Yes. Um, you find one which has a bit more of a, uh, something almost a little bit darker, a bit like nighttime. Kind of has this feeling of like ominous, and it kind of reminds you of Ophelia. Um, there's one which has a glittering, it's a piece of quartz which almost seems to have like a vein of gold in the middle of it. Um, it reminds you of Xanthius. Um, and then one which has like a bright, sunny feeling. Uh, it very kind of reminds you of Daisy. It also has Daisy's face on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, as she is stood behind you, being reflected. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you can find one. Yeah, twenty gold, and you can get like a little gemstone cool. for everyone. Nice. Thank you. All right. Uh, very lovely gemstone collection. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, it's, it's very simple stuff, but uh, just for what we could find in the mine on occasion, and I know how to polish and cut them from from the stones. So wonderful. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, um, I've got to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get. Uh, a full set what? of cooking utensils. Right, well, I'll leave you to it then, sir. Yes. Uh, gruff very quickly, as Joe, I want to make sure everyone kind of gets a um, shout in. I guess I'll go, because I want to look for because I think Gruff has probably processed looking around the group at the breakfast table. They don't strike him as an outdoorsy bunch. So um, he's going to go try and find some kind of tent sure. or like some kind of covering. So I guess he's going to go to the, go to the store. main store. When he walks into the main store, is there any kind of like doorbell or chime or anything on the door? No, there does wouldn't it, be. Not in this it, world, no. Does it say Bing Bong Bang? No, no. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get that? Wait, I've had this for like three weeks, but we weren't live. <laughs> I just didn't know. I was just like, I messaged Ali why are you like, bringing this up now? This is weird. I've been staring at that for the whole time. It's canon! For podcast listeners, Katie's wearing a ping pong shirt. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, to the joke. Uh, I, I messaged Ali on it like weeks ago and I was like, where'd you get your ring on? <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> That's amazing. Uh, that she, really took she, me by surprise. She unveiled it like what ten minutes ago. Yeah, I just because I've been dealing with this. I've been looking either. this way. Um, anyway, um, no. You, so you're going to make your way to the general yes. store. In that case, you and, and Rowan will probably make there. It sounded like Xantius might be heading that direction as well, Tom. Yes, I put I your just fucking wanna... phone down. I... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, the angry. Podcast listeners, I picked up my phone for like half a second. <laughs> it was like for just the briefest second. I oh. may as well have been moving it. Yeah, no, I know. I'm checking. I'm checking. So, uh, no, no, I was. I, <laughs> I just want to. Daddy's not mad at his special boy. Oh, of course, of course. I love you, Daddy. Um, I, yeah, I, I want to just uh, refill uh, like travel supplies, and sure. uh, I, I, I want to pick up some. Like also just some traveling outfit, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Like if it's raining, I want Full like jester. a jester. What? Full jester. A jester hat. With the bells. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to dress like a jester. So you're really not subtle, like stealth situations. No, no, jingly bells. <laughs> though. I, when you said jester, my immediate immediately went to Zan dressed up as Jester from Critical oh. Role, which would also be very funny. No, um, but no. no. Um, um, but yeah, like uh, yeah. A, like a I don't know if there's like a waterproof. Like, well, they'll be like traveling cloak. cloaks. They wouldn't be waterproof, but they would be made from like wool, so it's a little bit better for like you know you hang out to dry. It's more water resistant yeah. and things like that. You can definitely buy like a traveler's cloak. Gloss. Um, booties? You can definitely get gloves, definitely get booties. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the clothes you can get in the market, the things like the boots and the gloves you'd probably get from the general store as well. Okay. Um, like, because they'd be like leather, like you'd be looking at like waxed leather boots, waxed leather gloves, that kind of stuff. Can I do like that. that too? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like everybody's going to be going to the general store. Yeah, so. yeah, I'm well, shopping via the bakery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> probably. I feel like Daisy, well, actually, I'd probably go to the general store first and then. Sure. I think Daisy's on a blanket buying mission. <laughs> Sure. First and foremost. Nice. Um, uh, yeah, so, well, you all arrive. So, uh, Sterling and Sons uh, supplies, there is a, a, a symbol outside which shows like a silver coin, the the, the coin of, of Ulfair, the Empire, a silver Empire coin with a dragon's head on it. Um, and it seems to be just uh, that with a framed by a sort of accent around the sides, basically. No specific image, just kind of like a cursive accent. Um, very neat handwriting on the board, um, little lead, leaded window out the front looking out and you can see inside that there are rows of like shelves wooden and stone um with filled with things and when you enter there is a dwarven woman um she looks to be not elderly but certainly like older like a kind of more mature woman uh kind of very buxom but kind of broad kind of like uh you know body and frame uh her black hair kind of has like streaks of gray it's all like piled up into like braids that are tightly wrapped around her head um and you can see that she has uh no there doesn't appear to be any sort of like of the metal skin the earth skin on her face but on her hands you see these kind of delicate swirling patterns around her like fingers and around her palms and around the backs of her hands and they've been chiseled into almost these delicate spirals almost nice. um and she looks over and you can see that when you enter there are actually two boys uh in the store they're like stocking the shelves and like cleaning and sweeping and things like that but there is um she pities them <laughs> immediate pitying from ophelia <laughs> Um, but the boys have a mixture of dwarven and human ancestry. They don't appear to be pure dwarven. Um, they're a little bit taller than a dwarf, and they don't appear to have any visible earth skin uh, or metal skin. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, their beards aren't quite as thick and, and full as like a full dwarf's. They have that sort of, uh, you know, uh, mixed ancestry. But they do still have beards. Yeah, they do. Like they're very short, but yeah, they're okay. coming through. But they're probably like teenage teenagers for dwarves, cool. uh, yeah, dwarven humans. Um, and when you enter, uh, there is no little bing bong. There is no little jingle of bells. Um, but uh, so they don't turn around. They've got no idea we're here. Well, the the Janya, the woman, is looking straight at you from behind the counter when you enter. It would be easier if there was a little bing bong. You know, it would be. Um, <laughs> but you walk in and you hear a kind of like. Oh, what? Hello, hello, come in, come in. Uh, welcome to Jay, welcome to Sterling and Sons. How can I help you? Oh, uh, very good morning to you. Good, um, morning. good morning. I'm looking for some travel supplies. We're going to be joining the soldiers on the ways to uh, Ashen Rest. Um, well, I must say, it's good news to hear that the, the, the roads have been finally opened. I was worrying that we weren't going to get much business in the next few days, but. Um, we can certainly help with that, can we, boys? Uh, and you see the the boys kind of like, hey, yeah, yeah, ma, yeah, yes, ma. And they kind of like turn around, like, uh, and she kind of shuffles them over. Well, what what are you looking for? Me and the boys can help you with. Is there anything in particular? Oh, yes, the, hi there. A really cozy blanket. 
We can do cozy blankets. Yeah, sure. We got a, we got some various blankets we can do. Yeah, uh, Ragnar, why don't you go? I think they've got we got some out the back. You go fetch them for the young miss. He's like, oh, okay, Ma. And he kind of shuffles around the back, and you hear him kind of shuffling around the back. Uh, blankets? Any, anything else people are looking for? Or? Uh, appropriate spring wear attire, I believe, would be sufficient. Oh well, I mean, we've got we've got, clothing wise. I mean, I've got some simple things, but uh, uh, and she kind of goes over, and you can see that one of the shelves has been made like a bit deeper and a bit wider and there is like racks of clothing but Ophelia immediately this is simple like this is like very simple kind of cotton work dresses kind of cotton tunics and trousers that kind of stuff no lace. this is not <clears throat> your a cup of tea maybe. cup yeah it's the it's it, it's you know you have a, a certain standard of how yes. you're used to living and it's it's a little bit beyond that um, anything more Bespoke. I'm afraid, uh, and she looks and she's like, my dear, I can tell that you are a woman of fine taste, but I'm afraid that we just aren't used to dealing with that kind of clientele here. You'd be better off in places like the town up in Ashen Rest or even in Ferris, the big city. Um, but around here, I mean, I, I, I mainly, it's, you know, supply and demand. Ain't a lot of demand for fancy laces and fabrics in, the, in Burnell, I'm afraid. Mm. Um, need something in the interim, though. Oh, uh, I suppose it... It might have to do, I suppose. I mean, what exactly is the worry? Is it heat? Is it, uh, you know, wet and rain? I, I mean, I, we've got boots and cloaks and things like that that I can help you with. But... I just don't know what to expect. Well, around this time of year, rain, uh, you know, you might, we get a bit of mist now and then, wind, uh, mm. but the heat's not too bad. It doesn't get much warmer than this. Um, it doesn't get much Ooh, colder. Do you have eyeglasses for the, for the sun? Well, I I think mm. might have something around here like that. Um, and she kind of like shuffles around and she's like, okay, well, uh, 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 Mittal, why don't you deal with the rest of these fine folks while I go and search for this lady's eye? I, that was, I had a trader come by. He had something like that I bought off of him. Give me a moment. Um, oh, thank you. And you see this uh, dwarf, this kind of surly uh, human dwarven teenager. He's like, uh, can, can, I, can, I help, can I help help you with anything? Um <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm also looking for some uh, traveling clothes. Uh, I, I take some of the gloves, maybe a cloak or. Uh, oh yeah, we got, we got, we got, we got cloaks. We got boots. We got gloves. Wonderful. I'll take some of those gloves. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I, I, I don't speak too good. Um, uh, yeah, what about um, uh, rations? Uh, some sort of uh, we got, we got like tra we got trail rations. We got like a hard tack, and we got like biscuits and we got uh, jerky. At this point. With oh, fine fish. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, hey, big man. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 how you doing? <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, he like goes over, he finds like a, 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 a there's like a, ma there's some mannequins with like thick um, waterproof cloaks, like woolen cloaks. Mm -hmm. He pulls off one of those. He finds you a pair of like thick leather gloves with like straps waxed. Um, and he finds you a pair of boots. He like looks at the boots and he's like, look, he's like, what? How big's your feet? <laughs> uh, what size are you measuring in there? Huh. Um, I, like two hands, three hands, put, put it on the and foot. a half. Give me the, give me the boot. Put it on the floor. Okay. Thank you. Put my foot next to it. Uh, this one maybe not so much, but he, you can see that the other one he's holding probably looks more about your size. That one, please. No, this one's far too small. small. <laughs> uh, he hands it to you. Um, it fits. There's maybe it's a bit too big, but it's he. He's like, I can put some padding in it. That might help. Uh, uh, if anything, I needed adjusted to be a little bit tiny, bit bigger. Is that possible? Is that a possible? You want bigger? Slightly, slightly. Uh, it's, uh, I can feel it rubbing in my. What is this role play? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Well, I didn't stop. <laughs> you saw it. Bring clothes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Measure. We, yeah. You can, it can be adjusted. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> foot roll. Dragonborn's first shoes. Listen. <laughs> People love this shit. I'm into it. I'm into it. Um, people love feet. It's hot right but now. The gloves fit perfectly. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, they're, they're adjustable. Um, Don't say it. Is that Don't and, and then rations? It, manifest it. Uh, rations. They basically do these like ration packs where it's like a three days worth of like hard tack, dried fruits, jerky. Um, they sell them in these packs of three day, like equivalent of about three days mm. worth of stuff. A meal, a snack, and a water skin, and you get that for three gold. Uh, no. Uh, it's the, the oh, ration pack is three <laughs> days worth of food in one pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More skins than that are all separate. You've got to buy those. Okay. Um, 
Uh, just two of those little baggies of food, then, please. All right, and he starts putting that little package together for you. Um, Gruff, was there anything you wanted to buy? Big tent. Big tent, yeah, yeah. Or just some tent. kind of, like, I don't know, like a water, not a water skin, but you know what I mean, like a... A canvas, like a sheet. Canvas, tarp. Yeah, yeah, like a big tarp. Yeah. Yeah, a tarp would be a lot cheaper than a tent. A tent is like got the poles and everything. I've got a tarp. Tent. Yeah, so you, have you got one already one or you want to buy one? tent, which is oh. one yeah. row and tent. It's, it's one a row one row and tent, yeah. Okay. Um, so a tarp would be a little bit different. It would give you some shelter, but a tent would be better, but it's more expensive and it's more to carry Bigger, as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what do you ask? Do you want a tent, tarp or a tent? Very important decisions to be made. This is some real D&D &D shit. Mm. How much do I like yeah, these people wait. so far? Not enough tarp. All right, oh, all right, uh, very good. I'll do pricing and stuff when we've got everyone's items. Uh, what did you want? I right? think Gruff would be more familiar with how to use tarp, right? Yeah, like, so, yeah. absolutely. I mean, also, they just know get sheet, make sheet go overhead exactly. to protect. Yeah. To protect. That's it. Gruff is also from a land where like he can make a shelter out of the snow itself. Like yes. you can make an igloo and be like, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I've got this covered. Um, I'm fine. I don't know what you don't have to really do. worry about rain. It's more like snowstorms <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. Landslides. Uh, I don't know if I'm in the right shop, but Marion told me to go to somewhere that sells cooking utensils. I thought Marion got arrested. Not Marion, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, doesn't say it wrong. No, I, know, okay. I like just tormenting. Um, yeah, so he's like, uh, Mittal is just like, uh, yeah, we got like pots and pans, we got a spatula, got a skillet. Are you uh, what? What store is this? This is uh, this is Jay Sterling and Sons Supplies. I think I'm in the right place. Yeah. yeah, my my, my well, I'm 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 Mittal Sterling. Uh, my brother is Ragnar Sterling. My ma is Janja Sterling. She owns a shop. Okay, so cooking. Yeah. <laughs> Starts getting, gathering stuff. That up. was less than one syllable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half a syllable. Yep. I like um, cooking pot. They start some. They start assembling all this stuff. Ragnar comes with the blanket. Starts helping out. Um, Janja returns, uh, and she can see that she has. Uh, she brings back this kind of little wooden box and she's just like, well, I did find this. I did have the thing that I remember. You said eyeglasses? Oh, yes. Uh, this gentleman, he, he, this was designed in the, uh, up in Ice Heart, they, they sometimes uh, have to wear things to block out the light because mm. there's something up there. Um, <laughs> this is kind of, that. <laughs> she doesn't know. Um, uh, uh, but th this gentleman created something that's kind of inspired by that, I guess, uh, somebody who was, a, she opens it up and it's, you know, like those uh, rounded sunglasses that kind of have oh, like the yeah. extended sign yeah. That, like really block the light, basically. Yeah. Um, it's a pair of those very finely made silver kind of like um, bands that wrap around the kind of like blinkered section. It's like leather, like like pegged on, like kind of goes back, and then these black round frames, basically. Um, uh, I, now these are uh, there's uh, th these are quite fancy. They're a beautiful little piece here. I couldn't let these go for. Um, I probably couldn't let these go for less than a hundred gold. And I'm going to tell you now, Rhiannon, they have no benefit whatsoever. This is just, you want a cool like... pair of shades. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Mark, the... the benefit is vibe. Yeah, no, I'm down. <laughs> but yeah, she's in the post and ask for a fashion check on those, because damn, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They are They're quite spectacular. <laughs> Shit. Well, I certainly think so. I mean, I'd never seen anything like these. These are real, real, you know, rare piece of my little collection that I have here. You know, I'm very be hard to hard to part with them. Throw in maybe a tarp or a cloak, and I will give you a hundred for the both. She kind of thinks about it. Oh, you pressed me a hard bargain, miss, but sure, that sounds about right. I can do, uh, we can do a, a waterproof cloak uh, in with that, if that's uh, to your fancy. Perfect. Perfect, all right. Um, and you, you get the sense that she she's definitely overpriced the thing, oh, so yeah. it's it works out for her. Um, and she goes and fetches like a, um, there's a selection of different colors. Uh, Xanthius, you've already picked up a cloak. What color would you like? Your cloak. Uh, what, uh, I'd probably like a uh, yellowy... Like a yellowy kind of like brownish. In, in It'd be tan. more of like a kind of like yellowy brown kind mm -hmm. of like color, kind of a very faded kind of... Deadly. Tan. Yeah, tan. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yep, you, they find one of those. Uh, they have um, black, dark green, and dark blue left. Black, please. Yeah, I figured. Uh, 
<laughs> they uh, patch that all up for you. Um, so for you, that would be a hundred gold for oh, Ophelia. Uh, Rowan, you wanted the, the you oh, wanted yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. Uh, the cook's utensils will set you back ten gold. Okay, uh, Rowan, okay. it's not too much. Like they're pretty simple. It's like an iron skillet, like a copper pan, that yeah. sort of stuff, and a wooden um, spoon. They throw in the wooden spoon. Yeah, absolutely. A big wooden spoon, though. Big one. Because using my hands are boiling. <laughs> no, it's got like tools like knives and things like that, Excellent. chopping knives and stuff as well. Um, it is the full package of cooked utensils. <laughs> Great. Um, Perfect. Uh, a tarp uh, was what we wanted. That will probably just set you back like three gold for a tarp. Sweet. Xanthius, my boy. Gloves, boots, and a cloak. Yep, and two, and then two days, days worth of like three day packs of rations. That is going to set you back. Uh, so that would be, I would say, for the whole package, we are looking at. <laughs> I'm going to find the thing. <laughs> the thing! Let's call it um, a 10. That would be. 15? How does 20 sound? Stop breathing. 25 gold for the whole package. Mm. 25. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. For cloak and boots, uh, uh, gloves. He's a trader. You could tell. <laughs> and <laughs> you just wanted blankets, right? Like big, thick blankets and then a tarp, sort of. Uh, basically, I want a cozy blanket yep. and a tarp uh, and maybe some rations, please. Okay. Uh, so that would be three. Uh, uh, you would be looking at about eight gold okay do they have any other cloaks Is it, i don't think do they have an orange cloak uh, the orangey one was taken by xanthius already Bitch. <laughs> it's uh dark green and dark blue left bit of a clash of colors it's only a, it's only a small store they've only got what they've got the top that graph for was it enough is for... that enough for no no it's just a one person it would be, you could get two people under it okay another one is not bad to have daisy would have just okay, yeah, that's gone. enough then. Sure. That'll be enough. Then. Stay warm, get something to cover you, and gone. Yeah. Ah, buy that. Did you ruin that two person tent carrying the body? Oh, I ruined. wrapped up a body in it. You did, right? It's, it's, you can wash it. Shall. It's bloody. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> bloody, but. Philly will clean it. That dog against the glass <laughs> door. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, I can see that. <laughs> So it's the dog, it's the meme, the, the Thune dog. Yeah. Thune. Oh Nose pressed up against. Tongue from right. um, I will <laughs> test the blanket and get one of them to hold it up and then cocoon myself. It's cocoonable. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it up for you and then just walk into it. And yeah. then just smell it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then just a little hand will come out with eight gold. <laughs> Nice, and then you just sort of mummy yourself away. Oh yeah, she's um, staying. So we're gonna walk out of this store. I'm wearing like protective clothing. You've got kick-ass sunglasses. You're a metapod. <laughs> Arden. <laughs> and, like, I'm very you're cozy. Covered in fish. And clanging. Uh, You've got the full Samwise Gamgee thing now, like hanging off your backpack, like the pots yeah. and pans. Don't know how to use them. He's yeah. never cooked a day in his life, but he's got them now. But we all walk out of the store like a runway. Can I? Because <laughs> I'm guessing my um, my aesthetic hides and all that probably aren't enough for like I don't know protective. Humans. Well, you're also a wild heart, so you have a layer of fur, which is going to help as well. Like so like from, from from cold weather. Yeah. Like you're used to ice heart. Cold is is not going to trouble you as much I'm just as anything else. Whether or not to get one of the cloaks. I mean, for traveling, if you're sleeping, it's more like the cloaks are going to be good for like keeping the rain off you and stuff like that. Um, you don't really need to worry about that as much. Being a wild heart. Yeah, I'll probably leave it for now and then regret it later. Sure. It's up to you. You can, yeah, it's fine. Um, but yeah, you guys finish this little kind of shopping spree. You get all the supplies that you need. Uh, Janice Sterling and her sons happily like package everything up <laughs> for you, take your money. Um, and then, yeah, you make your way out. It's been like a couple of hours, like maybe an hour or so, of just like wandering, buying your various supplies. Um, you can see that uh, the authority Techis and Cade and the rest of the soldiers are all basically ready. Uh, they're waiting by the southern gate out of Burnell that leads out onto the road. Yes. Can I go to the bakery before you go? Sure. It's like a little market stand selling like fresh breads and things like that. I want to buy the best bread. Yeah. Is this just because you want to have some bread or is this like a cooking later kind of bread? Oh, she wants to have enough so that she can have a little snack now, but then sure. to take it with her. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. You can spend one gold and you get some a lovely amount of fresh, fresh bread and 
rolls and things like that. It's a, an, a, an aesthetic bread. <laughs> yeah, like a bread that's This too, is a bread that you're munching on the road. Yeah. That, that, you know, that she's, she's got money for the first yeah. time in a little while and she's like, I'm gonna buy some good bread. Yeah. It's getting a nice focaccia with like rosemary and salt. Oh, Are you not slide. right now? Yeah. Yeah. So hungry. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. So anyway. With all your supplies done, you guys make your way to the southern gate, and uh, Mike, yeah, are you guys, is your business here done? I don't want to. I, I think so. I think just on the, me. on the way out of the store, like mm. Gross probably the last one out. He'll turn to Janya, Janya. Yeah, Janya, Janya Sterling. Uh, and just be like, your sons, they're very considered boys. Oh yeah, well, you know, I've raised them that way, and they're going to inherit the store one day, like I did. So I'm going to make sure that they know how to do business and how to interact with folks. That's very kind of you to say, sir. Thank you very much. So thank the nice man, and thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh. <laughs> Uh, if anyone's what brushes kind of blushes, I don't know how you can tell. Um, but just whiskers. like yeah, whiskers curl a little bit, and he just like Tail mumbles and and. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 safe journey now. Take care. Uh, and they kind of wave goodbye. Yeah, they just you head out. Uh, so is everybody ready to start traveling to? I'm still in the blanket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have everyone got what? Uh, everyone just what? move the blanket down a bit to have a little tiny piece of bread. Puts it back on. <laughs> um, I am ready for adventure. Adventure. This is so I... exciting. Now, I, let's. Hopefully, the uh, journey will be entertaining. Yes, but adventure, not so much. I just want to make it to Ash and Rest, and uh, see the Duke. Yes. With the. But it's all part of the journey. Sure, yes. The great outdoors. Yep. The wind in our hair. There's new songs. You could uh, compose some new songs. Yes. See what songs come to me. <laughs> have you been outdoors much, Lord Xanthius? Oh, yes. I have, in fact. Oh. Uh, not traveling so much, as you can probably tell uh, from my journey from Kelscaris, but I've been outside plenty, yes. I can, I can fare. Not so meek and firm and vulnerable. Sorry, I stumbled over the words there, but <laughs> I'll get used to it. Um, Ophelia, Daisy? Daisy? Hi! Yeah, you're in that, good. That is Daisy. I'm ready for this. Walking? Yes. Would you prefer we take a wagon or...? Oh, just... Don't usually walk very far. I could do very good piggybacks. Oh, that would be lovely. You're I'll let you know when welcome. I get tired. Great. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Are you me? <laughs> You're me. <laughs> Where's um? Well, you find because Ophelia has an ability, right? If do you actually get up on Rowan's back when he offers, <laughs> or are you going to save it? <laughs> mm, <laughs> no, For podcast God. listeners, Rowan is making a very thinking face. I'll I, save it. I don't know. Let's save it. Okay. Um, Can't be anything good. Well, no, whilst you guys are kind of having this conversation, uh, the older, <laughs> the older-looking uh, human in the soldiers approaches with the three other soldiers and the authority with them, uh, and he kind of uh, scratches his bald. He's kind of got like that peach fuzz bald head. Like he's not bald by like Aww. you know he shaves it clearly, yeah. like shaves it really close yeah. down. He's kind of got like stubble around his face. He approaches. I was going to give him the shepherd voice, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, but he just approaches and he's just like, oh, uh, hello there, my name. Is, um, I'm Sergeant uh, S- Sergeant Yoro. Uh, I'm here to act as your escort to Ash and Rest on behalf of the captain. Um, uh, Sergeant Yaro is technically my full title. These guys have to call me Sarge, uh, but your travellers call me Guy. Uh, and he just offers a hand. He goes around. He's like, "Hello." Oh, shake it very daintily. Oh, oh yes, sir. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, kind Pleasure of, to meet you, I'm oh, Rowan. He's like, "Oh, hello, sir. Hello, big lady." He kind of like shakes your hand. Uh, comes up to Graf, shakes your paw. Well met. Uh, and he kind of goes around, Xanthius and Daisy and everything else. Little hand out the blanket. <laughs> he kind of like laughs a little bit. He's like, oh, oh I didn't realise it was, uh, I thought it was uh, five five people were transporting, not four in a walking blanket. But... <laughs> 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 it's, I know it's Chris Trot being sarcastic, but Rowan is being very genuine. You love that one. Yeah. That was um, so loud. <laughs> and and, and Sergeant, Sergeant Yarrow is just like, oh, it's a good one, it's a good one. That was... Um, anyway, jokes aside, let me introduce. Uh, uh, I think you've already met young Cade, um, but uh, accompanying with us as well, I've got Private Bliss, and he points at the tiefling. 
Um, and uh, Private Dayron as well, and that's the Wild Heart, the Wolf Wild Heart. Uh, they'll be accompanying us uh, back to back to Ash and Rest as well. Um, shouldn't be too much trouble. We're going to follow the Imperial Highway. You know, it's well well protected, and we didn't encounter any trouble on the way up here, so it shouldn't be a, shouldn't be a problem. Um, uh, he nervously, you see, Sergeant Yarrow guy. Uh, he kind of glances towards the Authoritor and isn't quite sure if what to say about it. He's just like, oh, I, and I think the Authoritor is joining us as well. And you see the Orc mm. uh, Zaron Your best Tekis. friend. Oh, I heard. Your best uh, friend. He just looks over. He's like, yes, I need to report of what happened to my superiors in the city. Um, what was the Wild Heart's name again? Uh, Day uh, Dayron. Dayron. Thank you. Ron, Ronnie, Ronald. Well, I have no doubt we'll be in good hands hey, on this Ron. journey. Oh, thank you very much. No, I, I said it shouldn't be too much of a problem. The, these are all a bit, uh, you're all a bit green, but uh, they're, they're, they mean well, and uh, it'll be good if we, uh, you know, get some get some distance in and everything else. But uh, can't hurt having fresh blood on these on this escort mission. Indeed, indeed. Always good to train the fresh blood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> Uh, the sergeant will say, uh, "It's about we. It's, it's normally about five days uh, journey to Ash and Rest. We'll be on the road, but it's along the Imperial Highway, so there's little rest spots. Uh, we'll camp overnight at the kind of established spots. Uh, there's usually other travellers and things there, so it's usually safe. Um, and we'll make our way there. But if everyone's ready, we're all ready to go. As if you all are." Ready. I believe so, yes. Wonderful. All right, well, let's get going. Um, all right, and then you guys are going to make your way. Everyone say bye, Burnell. Yeah. Bye, you... Burnell. Bye, you Burnell. See... <laughs> Is this custom down here? No, uh, just bye, bye, Burnell. <laughs> Farewell. Burnell's treated Burnell. us very well. Yes. Well, somewhat well. Yeah, they gave us Forced us food. into a mine, bought a load of They didn't technically things. force us into the mine. We just... Wanted to kind get. Kind of, if we wanted right. to leave without. I'd say, out. actually, looking back, treated us okay at best. Peony Post? Great. That shop? Great. I offer you breakfast, so I'm quite content. With An it. entire night of uh, terror and anguish in a mine? Not so great. Points down for that one. I met my best friends in Burnell. You all. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if you say so, Rowan. <laughs> as he's got some BO building up now. Oh. Oh, and the <laughs> has, hasn't bathed in several days, and there's the the strong smell of fish that yeah, that's from yeah, Rowan's pack. That too. If he just with, starts gagging, <laughs> <laughs> with, <laughs> over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> With that wonderful image, uh, we see Burnell in the distance um, as you begin to make your way. Um... Just think of all the like epic journeys that begin yeah. with a single step. You know, the beautiful the cinematography of like yeah. Lord of the Rings, and yeah. then passing over yeah. Erida, um, Edress and stuff. And then, but in this, it's like a big hug with just this vampire lady going <laughs> <laughs> in sunglasses now. This um, big awkward leaning, just like oh, yeah, God, awkward dad, sort of like yeah. pat pat pat. Yeah. Um, a, a living blanket, like a metapod. Daisy's um, quite yeah. pleased for the hug though. Yeah. She likes it. She enjoys. She enjoys is the fact that, yeah, she's the, probably the only one that goes, oh, friends! Yeah. Yay! And then now, the branches. <laughs> I believe I mentioned it because when we were doing the mine, we talked about journey rules, yeah. when you are yeah. exploring a vast and unexplored lane. Now, when you are travelling the overland, uh -huh. so we are talking about, like, travelling in the places, we're going to use the same rules, and normally if you're travelling to a place like um, uh, trying to reach like a dungeon or a lair or something like that. you're going to an unusual place we're going to use the normal journey rules that I think I introduced last time but this time you are following the imperial highway this is a well travelled paved road we are talking like Look ancient good. Roman road right this is actually Ooh. paved with stone stretches yeah. on for miles um and so you don't really have any risk of getting lost. Uh, you are traveling with people who know this land pretty well. Um, so we're going to use a simplified version of the rules because things can still happen. We can still have events and we still need to see how exerting the journey is for you guys to make the saving throws and stuff like that. Um, so I would still like you guys to select the roles that we did last time. So as a reminder, you have the guide, the scout, the Lookout and the Quartermaster. Um, so I'm still going to need you guys to pick uh, those roles. I can do Scout if you want. Which one's survival-based? Uh, 
so the guide is normally the one who makes the survival checks. I will tell you that when you're following a road, the guide will automatically succeed on these checks. So the guide is actually like just responsible if an event comes up that requires them. Um, so in this case, because you've got a road to follow, there's no risk of you getting lost or anything like that. You don't need to make the check. You're going to automatically succeed it. But in case an event comes up, I need to know who's what roles to see who might have to deal with it or what might encounter. What would everyone else like to be? I, I helped last time because, uh, mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got quite high perception and survival. Equal in both, so I got really good perception. So what? It's kind okay. of burgeoning. Perception, whatever. It's right up there. Who needs it? You can see everything. No, you can't. You fucking can't. I mean, <laughs> despite the, the road being there, I could still be the guide. <clears throat> Yeah. In principle. Yeah. yeah. Just because remember, like, when an event comes up... <laughs> we're on the grass a little bit. Depending on what event <laughs> I roll... Uh, I'm listening, Mark. Yeah. Depending on what event I roll, that might be a responsibility of a certain role. So, like, if an yeah. event concerns, like, uh, the supplies, then the quartermaster is responsible for okay. it. Um, there are some events which are universal, like a monster attacks. That's going to be an event that, like, everybody has to deal with. It's not a certain role's, you know, responsibility. Um, but the lookout might get a chance to know of an upcoming attack before it happens, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's still important, but in this case, you don't. The guide does not need to make the base survival check. Um, so what are we thinking? I'll take lookout. All right. So we're gonna have uh, Gruff on lookout. I'll do scout. Daisy on scout. Quartermaster. It's quartermaster and guide left. Yeah. Well, if Rowan's gonna be guide, guide. Yeah. okay. So oh, Rowan is gonna be guide with a cool shade. Right. I can. I don't, yes, I don't know the land. Yeah, but you look cool guy. I do, I do look, I do look. Yeah, Quartermaster is less about the land and it's more like um, intelligence and sort of like wisdom based on like, you know, managing supplies and mm -hmm. kind of being the sort of overseer of the journey, basically. I don't know if I Everyone's do. on a blood diet. <laughs> overseer of the journey. <laughs> um, if I, <laughs> if at any point I look over at Ophelia, what's your current face like at the prospect of walking right now? It's and like this journey? Grumpy teenager. You're just <laughs> I'll be the Quartermaster. <laughs> So I'll help. Master. Who would you like to help? <laughs> Can I help with disadvantage? <laughs> <laughs> you are like actively it's like, sabotage. Uh, uh, Ophelia, please, I'm I'm just trying to keep track. Yeah, you just don't. Here. You just don't help. <laughs> like, you can just be like, I do nothing. That is an option, by the way. You can just say that, like, I do not help. <laughs> no, I am not a role. So I am just religion. present. I should yeah. probably help. I should. Uh, Ophelia will probably. You should, yes. yes. But what would Ophelia do? <laughs> Rhiannon, you should help. <laughs> Ophelia! <laughs> I'll help. Who would you like to help? Um, quartermaster. Okay. I don't think she'd be good at guide or lookout. She doesn't know the land very well. Sure. Yeah, makes sense. I, I think that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, so you guys uh, begin the journey. Um, because of it has an automatic success, uh, You, the first day, you travel without too much incident. Uh, you begin making your way south through Northvale. And as a reminder, Cauldra, most of Cauldra is an enormous valley in it of itself, and then there are kind of smaller valleys within it. Um, but imagine that the sides off in the distance on the horizon, you can see these sloping mountains. To one side of you are the obsidian mountains, these jet black, jagged peaks. Um, and to the other are the blades of the fangs of the Empress, uh, which are these kind of brown, still ragged, but snow tipped kind of mountains up on the side as well. Um, Xanthius, you would know that the Fangs of the Empress are somewhat of a natural border between Gildai and Cauldra, along with the Crimson Peaks further to the south, and they kind of create like a natural border between Gildai and Cauldra, mm -hmm. um, whereas the Obsidian Mountains are a border between the uh, Black Dragon's province, Urdas Kia, uh, and Cauldra, and they create these natural borders. The slopes of the valley are lush, fertile green hills, forests, mostly forested hills here in the valley, with the occasional river drifting through and sometimes in the distance forming lakes and things like that. You see vineyards and farms scattered all about the place. And as you travel along the Imperial Highway, you might, in the very faint distance, see other travelers and uh, big pack lizards and things like that, uh, mounts making their way about. And in the air above you, you might even occasionally spy the very distant shape of 
what could very well be a dragon flying past uh, on some important business going somewhere. Um, but the first day of travel uh, goes without too much incident. The day is clear and bright. Um, a, a few hours into your journey, it does turn a bit gusty and breezy as a wind kind of settles in. And uh, those of you who bought like cloaks um, are very, very welcome for the protection against the wind. Um, as it begins to blow against you. And then it kind of, the wind remains for most of the day, but it settles down by the night time. Um, when we reach night, you, uh, the Sergeant Yarrow pulls you to the side. You find a little campsite, a kind of uh, empty space to the side of the road. A little dirt track leads away from the Imperial Highway um, into a kind of secluded, uh, on one side of a hill, and you can see that part of the hill has been dug out to create like a, a wind bluff, basically. Um, and there's like a very simple wooden fencing. Barely wouldn't really protect you from anything, but kind of keeps wild animals out. Um, and it's uh, like a traveler's point, basically, like where you would set up a camp and you would camp for the night. You can see old stones and old sticks where a campfire once burnt maybe several days ago, probably as the army was traveling north in pursuit of the criminals that you, you uh, apprehended. Um, and yeah, what does it look like? How do you guys set up camp? What does this look like? You know, imagine those of you who have played Baldur's Gate, this is like, you know, you've, you've got tents and things like that. This is your opportunity to create like a little campsite. Um, I will tell you that uh, Tekis, the Authorita, and the, the soldiers, the soldiers will set up like little simple posts. Uh, they have like simple tents that they begin to erect and start setting up their own little campfire and things like that. But they're kind of keeping to themselves along with the Authorita, giving you guys room to do the same. Um, oh, tell me, uh, Sarge, Sarge? Uh, 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 you can call guy. me Sarge if you if you like, my lord. Uh, uh, guy? But uh, Guy is uh, is totally acceptable as well. That's what my friends call me, Guy. Uh, would you prefer we um, rest up near 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 to you guys, or would you like us to? Uh, yeah, so you can you can do whatever you feel is comfortable. I mean, I'm going to have um, normally what we do is we rotate in pairs. So one pair of us will watch, and then another pair will watch for the other half of the shift. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can camp close to us if that's going to make you feel better. But uh, the space is big enough. If you want some privacy, you're more than welcome to as well. Uh, would you require any of us to uh, keep watch as well? No, no. I mean, well, you can do if you like. If if you if you want to keep your own watch, by all means, you know, more eyes the better. Uh, but uh, no, me and my well. We'll, we'll be doing our own watch anyway. And obviously, if we see any sign of trouble, we'll we'll let you know. Okay, um, wonderful. Oh, and if you're in need of any um, food, um, the big guy over there, Rowan, he's bought plenty of supplies. I'm sure he might have oh, some. Oh, lovely. Well, I mean, yeah, we brought a few things. Um, Bliss does a bit of cooking, don't you, Bliss? And she's like, yeah, you know, I've, my mum taught me a few things. I don't know too much, but I, I can give it a go. Maybe we could do a big pot of, like, a stew or something like that. And she kind of looks over at you, Rowan, like, I don't know. Do you, did I you know what you got? all my fish onto the ground. And, That's uh, not a fish. Start clanging all the pots and stuff. <laughs> oh God! Okay. And a wooden spoon, it's like holding it upside down, figuring it out. Yes, yes. Very stressed. Right. Okay. I, I'll. We'll do a big. We'll do a big group meal. I think Sarge and and, and he's like, yeah, sounds good to me. It's, and she, she'll come up to you and be like, hello, oh, well, bliss. And she kind of offers a hand. Oh, she's very me. pink. Like she's very pink. Like like almost Barbie pink skin tone and she has like white hair with streaks of blue in it kind of long kind of curly almost um her horns are quite short she has like really little short devil horns um and, but she seems friendly enough and she's kind of dressed in the soldier's garb um she's got like a bow slung on her back um and she's just like yeah Bl name's bliss um right have you done this before oh no that's all right. Um, I, I can teach you what my mum taught me. It's, I'm not a oh, cook, yes, but I know a, I know a few basic things. We can do uh, we can do like a fish stew, like a fish stew. Have you got um? Let's see. What have you got there? Oh, potato potatoes. Yeah, potatoes. Yeah, we can put those in. Uh, we'll Salt. probably maybe just the carrots we'll use. We've got a bit of broth here. And she's like, have you got? What's that? Is that spices? Have you got like? A, oh, let's have a look in these. Yes. And she starts rummaging through. Um, this fish needs using first. Oh, good, thank you. Yeah, that's great to know. Yeah, oh, it's, ooh, it's looking a bit cloudy as I, isn't it? Tried um, to tell me it was fresh. Yeah, no, they, they, they always try and scrape Rough. you. I'm glad ooh, you know. That is, that's a cauldron special fish. <laughs> <laughs> you are having that's me a on cloudy young kipper. Lord Lane. <laughs> yeah. cloudy it's like a cloudy eyed <laughs> kipper. Yeah. And how did you manage um, to catch a cloudy kipper? They're so rare. <laughs> Iridium level. Um, but no, she pulls out your pan, and what this is going to be is you're not going to gain proficiency in cooking tools, but. You are. You can learn the recipe of fish stew, uh, which means you can make this one. Um, so she's going to loan you her proficiency for this recipe. Cool. So you add an extra plus two to it when you R. make the roll. R.I.P. for any future cooking. What yeah, it's just fish all the time. <laughs> what role I'm happy. Be, then? Uh, so this is. So Plus cooking will be either wisdom or intelligence. Okay. Okay. 
So, um, so what's your highest there? Well, intelligence is minus one. Right. Yeah. And wisdom's plus one. All right, so probably wisdom. So you're going to add uh, one from your wisdom, and then she's gonna Bliss is going to loan you her plus two proficiency. Okay. Plus so it's a plus three. three. Eleven. Yeah. Eleven? So eleven total? Total. Okay. It, it's perfectly normal. Like, it's not bad. It's not going to convey any benefits, but it is a pleasant meal. I don't think um, I removed the eye, Bliss. Oh... I, I, I will we'll, we'll, we'll fish it out. Yeah, that's that's fine. Fine. No, 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 don't put your hands oh. in it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like dirt, like in front of your hands are in there. The delicacy. Yeah. We uh, eat the whole thing. Um, <laughs> I'll eat it. So the two of you, uh, Bliss and uh, and Rowan, cook this meal. The, the smell, a very strong fishy smell, kind of fills the camp. Um, but you create a nice, hearty, kind of a bit I flavorless. A face. Yeah. I feel you made a face. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, um, Rowan, very much much enjoys the company sure. and uh, asks lots of questions yeah. about Bliss, um, asks for a story, that sort of thing. Not that you have to do one. Um, she will tell you, she's like, oh, I'm not really much of a storyteller, but uh, I mean, pool. Do you know the story of Saint Typhine? I mean, I guess you probably do. Oh, okay. Um, I guess, like, I guess us, tif I guess us Typhlings know it more than other folks. Um, but she tells you the story of Saint Typhine, uh, one of the one of the ascended saints of the Church of the Scions. Um, and she, I'll, I'll try and tell it in character. She's like, well, uh, long ago. Um, there was I'm not a, I'm not a storyteller but yeah uh, long ago there was a temple and there were these priests and they were going about their ceremonies they were they were praying to to the the scions up above and then suddenly there was this flash of light and appeared appearing before them was the most beautiful woman they'd ever seen but she bore the wings of a devil and horns and a tail um, and they were said they said that she had the fire of the helian throne in her eyes and she was she was a devil and at first these men uh, the priests and women reached for their weapons ready to strike down this force of the planes that had invaded althea uh, but the woman cried out and, and pleaded for them to show her mercy because she had come here to repent that she had seen the wickedness of her ways and that she wanted to return the love that she had stolen um, across the centuries and whilst they didn't believe they didn't believe her at first and then when they gazed into her eyes and when she pleaded with them and touched their hands it is said that they saw the truth of this woman's uh, request and her name was Typhine and she went on journeys she traveled around Althea and she is said to have taken and brought love wherever she went those especially to those who are unloved by anyone else uh, the sick uh, the poor the infirm she took them into her arms and, and cradled them in an embrace and to some she took to her chambers men and women and she had many children across all of Althea everywhere she went she would sire children um, and raise them and then when she would find families that couldn't have children of their own she would give one of her own and, and they would raise them as as, as theirs uh, and these children came to be the Typhlings like me uh, that's where we come from that's that's how we came to be in Althea and now when a Typhling has children there's a chance that one of us is a, a fellow Typhling and that's that's where we came from and then one day Typhine she had traveled for hundreds of years you know being a, a, a devil or a demon she had, didn't age and then one day, uh, she was beloved by the people. They sung songs and praises of this woman that brought nothing but love and joy to the people that she met. And uh, then one day from her chambers, her assistants went to wake her and, and to you know bring her on a new journey. And they found that she was missing and, and they saw just the remnants of the light of the moon. And it was then that Melir, uh, it is believed that she ascended. She became an ascended saint. Uh, Melia took her into her realms, and now there are clerics and priests who pray to the saint, Saint Typhine, the saint of love, and the saint of adult things. Um, and um, yeah, and they, they receive her blessing and her powers, and that's 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 her story, and that's where that's where I come from, I guess. That's what not I come from, but my people, my lineage, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> It's all right. It's okay, big guy. It's <laughs> just a beautiful story. It is, yeah. Oh. She, yeah, she's you know seen as an icon of of um, redemption and and love and you know everything else. Anytime I picture that goddess, I'll think of your face. Oh, Tao, and she like blushes. She's like, no, you can't do that. No, she's supposed to be the most beautiful being like uh, that's yes. ever graced the world. Yes. Don't. And she's like, you know, really kind of blushes quite hard. I, I'll stop you. And she like punches your arm. Ow. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, you kind of she tells you that story as you're cooking, basically. Lovely. Um, and also because you cooked a hearty meal, that is a mark towards your camp comfort level. Oh. Um, That's so the thing. more comfortable you make your camp, uh, then the easier your constitution saving throw for your exhaustion stuff is going to be at the end. Oh. So. <laughs> Yep. Ew. <laughs> uh, Cloudy eye. Cool. Anyone? Uh, does anybody else want to do anything? You don't have to, by the way. This is a purely like optional thing. We can just be like, you guys rest. It's not a big deal. Um, the weather is currently fair. It, uh, you don't. It might change when throughout the night, but yeah, it seems I'd, to be fair and clear right now. I'd probably put up the tarp and sure. like try and just set that up and cool. get a little like sleeping. Can you give me a survival check if you're going to put the tarp up, please? I could. Just to see how well you can construct it and stuff. 20. 20, yeah, really sorry. You find like uh, some, you go and gather some wood, you find some like long enough things to like create poles, you find a part of the hill which is really sheltered, some nice heavy rocks to kind of weight the top down and you create like a little lean to basically, mm -hmm. just enough for you to get under it and if it rains, uh, the wind's probably not gonna knock this down and if it rains, it will keep you dry um, and everything else. Can I try and do the same so thing? I will watching, check as well, please. Watching what Gruff is doing. Well, Gruff would probably be very awkwardly trying to instruct you on how to do it. She's probably, like... the tarp's bigger than she realized, mm. and she's gotten herself a bit tangled up sure. in trying to unfurl it all, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Gruff, Gruff would be helping, like, oh, no. Uh, well, just, uh, just because you've set your own up, you're not gonna be able to give the help well, action, no, but yeah, no, not... role play wise, yes. Role play wise, like, just trying to untangle her from the tarp yeah. and, like, just give instruct, like, no, no, if you go, like, no, like this, no, no, it's upside down. Like this? It's probably like, like you're this? making your own and you're looking over it and Daisy's doing your run, you're upside like, no, 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 down, other yeah. way, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, survival check from Daisy then, please. One. <laughs> Perfect. It, you've constructed a lean-to. It is not going to last the night. It is absolutely going to fall on you throughout the night. But if there's no bad weather, it's not a it's not a problem. If there's bad weather, it's a, a problem. I have a blanket. It's fine. I'm just yeah. going to cocoon myself. Mm. I'm cocooning myself in under the tarp anyway. Two layers. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Um, See, this is why I got the big blanket. Yeah. Cocoon. It's just two layers. It's just like having two duvets now. Ophelia, uh, where are you planning on sleeping tonight? Do you have um, a camp? Uh... Oh, I've got that sorted. Percival, night time. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have in your equipment like a tent or anything I've like that? I've got a bedroll. Okay. So I've... Just the bedroll? Yeah, I just imagine Percival right. just well, the, come along. The, so... I imagine that what Percival details. will do, no, Percival is like carrying all your equipment, like yep. all of your, like all your bedroll, things like that, Percival carries. So he puts this backpack down, he starts pulling out a bedroll, and it is like a quilted, red, dark red, kind of plush looking, um, like sleeping bag almost, like, and it's kind of like, you know, cushioned and everything else. And he's like pumping it up. There's a pillow. He pulls that out, puts that down. There's these gorgeous, like, satin silk sheets that are being folded neatly. But he's kind of looking at the dirty ground. He starts sweeping up and like pushing the dirt away to create like a nice clean space. <laughs> um, and then when he finishes, he basically like takes off his monk robes and holds them up like over it. I was thinking exactly the same thing. <laughs> and he's, I, yeah. he like holds these ginormous monk robes out, revealing a <laughs> skeleton completely and he's there. Naked. Oh no! A lot of that's rolling a lot happening. Of, well, Rowan, I guess they that's has Rowan seen that yet. I no, haven't seen I it. Rowan and Daisy haven't, seen, haven't seen, seen it yet. I have described oh, I it to you. I Neither you have told us, but we haven't seen it. <laughs> we have. It. You have. Yes. Okay. We, we, we just saw the dancing. Um, uh, the authoritor and the four soldiers have not seen this. Scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Im and like immediately, like Zaron is just like. What by the science is that? And it's like, like you see magic charging in his hands. The soldiers like, right? bloody hell! By the scions, the scions and saints. And right, they're everyone, like ready everyone hold! Put down your oh, weapons! Do not worry. What is this abomination? Uh, this is uh, Ophelia's this is, assistant. This is Percival, my most beloved and trusted friend. Please, please calm down. You see, Zaron is like rubs his head because he knows uh, Osius. He, he's spoken to. You. He's like, I should have. I should have expected this. Uh, stand down, Sergeant. Um, and the Sergeant looks over and he's like, bloody hell, it's, it's the walking dead, Authority. What, what? I thought the same. You get used to it. I'm still not used to it, but you, I hope I will one day. <laughs> uh, uh, he like looks over and he's like, bloody hell, I hope I don't. That's walking bones. Um, the Authority will say, Sergeant, this woman has 
immunity on these matters. She is allowed to conduct necromancy by the writ of her diplom diplomatic mission here. Um, and you see that, like, the soldiers are, like, <laughs> like they're like, what is happening? Um, but you do, the authority will come up to Ophelia and be like, Le my lady, uh, Delarosa, hmm? if I may request, you should be very cautious. It is fine out here and with these soldiers, but in the cities and places like that, your servant will attract considerable attention in this way. We are not used to the, the dead in this manner. Okay, so is is this wrong? It is not normal for the Empire. We do not have our dead walking around. This is going to upset and frighten others. But they have nothing to be frightened of. He's, Percival is, means no harm to anybody. No. The only instances of necromancy that we are used to here in the Empire are when creatures from the vaults, the Proto-Magi vaults, escape. Sometimes the errant magics of those places awaken the dead, and they are very aggressive, and they attack and kill anyone they come across. We are likely to respond in that way to any sort of undead. I think in the in the robes, your servant is not so likely to draw attention, but you should be cautious not to have them so flagrantly uh, appear. I understand. But you must understand that Onosius necromancy is a gift. I do. I understand that. I understand that you have your beliefs and that it is quite common for the undead to um, help perform duties in your land, yes? Yes. Uh, that is not the case here. So okay. just be aware that some may react differently to what you expect. Should, should I announce that he is... I would. I would keep him clothed and robed as much as you can. And if you do intend on revealing him, do let others know. Okay, I shall. Thank you for your wise words. Yes, I just, I do not want, I do not want this to cause a diplomatic incident. I do not want your oh, servant no, no, to be no, attacked. Oh, no, 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 good heavens, no. Well, like, some may attack your servant and then you may wish to retaliate and then it would become mm, an incident. Yeah, I see. But yes, do, we should, perhaps, uh, perhaps another outfit underneath the robes to help disguise them or some such. Mm. Percival, would you mind putting your robes back on for me, darling, and maybe borrowing my, my cloak instead? Maybe hold that over. Starts putting the robes back on, comes over, takes the cloak, bows, oh, and then goes back into his position of creating the shelter. Thank you. We'll yeah. keep you safe. It just nods. Daisy has, in the meantime, cast... She's she's probably cast light on her dagger when it got a little bit dark anyway, mm -hmm. and is sitting wrapped up in, in, in the blanket, just shaking. The dagger's just shaking. The light, you can just see, is shaking slightly because she's just staring at Percival, just like... Yeah, you see the head kind of just turns in your direction, yeah. Daisy, but it turns, like, almost 360 degrees around the hollow kind of skull face, just looking at you. Ophelia, can you tell him... <coughs> Can you tell him not to look at me? Oh, sorry, sorry, but Percival, to me, darling, look at me, thank you. Thank you. It's okay. And he is okay, don't worry. He won't, he won't, it doesn't mean you any harm. I just haven't seen a skeleton before, ever. Okay, well, skeleton. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> She's just shaking. She's just gonna shake in her little blanket and be like. Uh. I'll just go over and just gently just Hold her hand. Just, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Shh, shh, shh. It'll be okay. Can you roll? Okay. Can you roll the d twenty for me, please? Right? <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen. You feel as you kind of touch Daisy's hand. You can feel that heartbeat, the risen heartbeat from her fear. The thump, the thump, the thump, like in her hand. It's so warm. But you're like, no. You keep it under control. We would just quickly just drop the hand and go back to her. Go back to Percival and just sit on her, her bedroll. <laughs> Uh, yeah, perfectly sheltered now with a big cloak over you. Um, a little statue of the Grey Father just on the side, <laughs> and she'll just kneel in front of it and just quietly just pray in front of Perfect. Statue. All right. Well, with that, unless there's any other business, we can take uh, our long rest. Uh, yeah. That is, I believe, break time. Break yeah. Time. Break time. Break time. All right. With that, we're going to take a little break here, everybody. I believe we've got a new fan. Oh, we're going to... Uh, We'll see you in part two. <laughs> I gotta do the podcast Thank you. Thing. Thank you. Well done. Professional. We'll see you in part, part two, everybody. Bye. 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 B
Oh, there we go. Now I can say we're going to take a five-minute break, and I think there's a lovely new fan art there video. Um, thank you all. Uh, there's been so much amazing fan art. I do want to say a huge thank you to everybody. It's been amazing seeing all the fan art for yeah. the new characters and the new campaign. Um, thank you all so much. Please, if you do make any art, fan art, if you do cosplay, if you make music, any of that stuff, please come share it in our Discord. Yes. Um, that's the best place to share it. Yes. Please do post it on social media as well, because we'd love to reblog it and retweet it. it. And now that shows other yeah. people who go like, oh, who's this cool uh, dragonborn Anakin Skywalker? I love him. <laughs> I want to watch High Rollers too. Um, so please do share it as well. But yeah, come share it on our Discord. I'll see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, with that, we're going to take our break. We'll see you in five minutes. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. 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 B
Welcome back to part two of High Rollers, uh, Althea, the Dragon Empire. You join us as our party have camped for the night. Uh, they have taken a moment's rest and respite on their journey south towards the town of Ashen Rest, leaving Burnell. Uh, supplies have been bought, um, a camp has been formed, and you guys have, uh, there have been stories that have been told, uh, a skeleton has been revealed. Um, <laughs> he naked. And many other things. Um, and yeah, this concludes, and that finishes our first day of the journey. Hell yeah. Um, you guys awake on the second day. It is clear and bright. Um, this is, uh, you are currently in the sort of spring season. Um, and so the weather is mild, not warm, but mild. Um, and it is a fairly bright and clear day with not a, not a cloud in the sky. Oh, cool. um, and you guys begin making your way, uh, just traveling. Uh, you continue the road south. Um, is there anything that you guys particularly, are there any conversations that you strike up or, you know, any anything that you can think of role play wise that, you know, as we go? Um, or... uh, does Xanthius kick me in his sleep? Am I, what, am I sleeping because next I to you? Imagine, because I have a two-person tarp, right? I imagine Gruff would... Oh, I'm there, am I? Yeah, well, Gruff would offer it. Oh, I would <laughs> He's like seen to... you. He doesn't think that you could probably put a tarp up. I could and then put mine is on. mine is flat on top of me, so yeah. you, there's, no there's space. nothing there. I mean, no insult to Daisy, but how hard can it be? A couple of sticks. It's quite hard, Cynthia's. A bit of fabric. I'd like to see you try it, actually. All right, might tomorrow. Okay, but if you can do it, then can you do mine too? Absolutely. Um, I would love to share the top. It look, doesn't look like it's going to rain. Do you think it's going to rain? This is last night, by the way. <laughs> it's always good to be prepared. Sure. Okay. Uh, I promise I won't kick. All right. Or thrash. All right. You roll for it. <laughs> Wars. I don't know. I've got no promises. <laughs> I will say, during the night, I do need Tom to do one thing for me. Uh, what? Shit. I need you... Make an unarmed attack. <laughs> right in the head. <laughs> I have to bring up a specific page. Oh, you oh. get a whole page. Yeah, I got a whole Google Doc. Yeah, I do. I really messed up my boy, actually. So, just consult my wait. table. The Descent. Uh, that's, that's the name of it. It begins. So, Tom Hazel. What do you need, puppy? I would like you to roll for me, because uh, I already did some of this, but I want you to have some some say. Okay. Um, roll a d6 for me. Uh, yes, am I adding anything, or just a, just a straight d6 up? and tell me the number. Big six. Big six. Okay. I can't remember if what I rolled last time. Oh, um, D four. I rolled last time. No, that's fine. Oh, is it D4? Um, I want to give you some choices in this, oh. but I don't. You can't know what they are choices for. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can't know the details. Oh, sounds like... You can't know the details. <laughs> sounds like the illusion. Of... <laughs> the illusion choice. No. Um, I'm going to give you three body parts. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to grow a new one. I. Hand, body. Hand. <laughs> hand. I just bought some banging gloves, so hand, please. Hand. You wake up kind of in the middle of the night. Gruff is asleep. It's snoring. not a fitful snoring. It's not a nightmare. You don't wake up from that, but you feel... It's like something... Uh, you almost feel like an itching in your hand. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the hand that you remember when you were coming back from the from the mine, there was like a strange discoloration of your fingertips. Um, and you kind of you noticed it, but only very faintly. Mm -hmm. um, and you feel that itching is spread throughout the fingers and it kind of wakes you up. And when you look in the in the dim firelight, you can see in the distance, um, Bliss and Cade are on watch, but they're looking out, not into the camp. And in the dim firelight, you can see that your hand, the fingers, the clawed hand, your dragon, you know, your draconic hand, um, the fingers have all turned black and it's now spreading almost up to your wrist. And there are almost like lines, like fissures of light and fire kind of burning through it. Okay. Underneath your okay. fingernails. Your fingernails are there, but they are blackened and hardened like onyx, uh, ridged like plates. And underneath, there's almost the faint glow of fire underneath them. <laughs> and you get this sense that there is power here now. You almost feel the heat in your palm. And just with a kind of brief 
flash of a test, that hand can conjure fire into it. Um, you gain two spells. You learn the Produce Flame cantrip. Okay. And once a day, or as using a spell slot, you can cast Burning Hands. Ooh. Out of your palm. So not using a spell slot, sorry. Once per day, not using a spell slot, but then you can cast it again using spell slots as if you knew the spell. And they're fire spells. Very good. Very good. Also awful. I'm looking at my hand. I don't like this one it bit. It is very noticeable. Like, if you are not wearing a glove, it will, like, anybody who sees your hand, it, is just, it does not look natural. I think, uh, I mean, I'll, when I first see this, mm -hmm. like, I immediately then, like, hide it away, look around the camp and see if anyone else is awake. Uh, Ophelia. No. <laughs> Last night, you were trying to sleep, trying to rest, trying to go into that meditative, trance-like state that you enter. But just that gnawing hunger. You've eaten. You know you can eat mortal food. You had some of Rowan's stew, but it it didn't sate you. It sated your body in the way that you know your body still needs food and water. You still have that attachment to the mortal realm. But there's that other hunger that's just ever since ever since that woman in the mines, and you tasted it for the first time in so long. It's just been gnawing at you. How awake is Ophelia at this point? I think she'd be, like, awake, like, just looking up at, like, I guess up at Percival, looking at the blackness of the cloak and, like, her hands just kind of, like, digging into, like, her bedroll. Can you roll a perception check with advantage for me, please? Thirteen. I'd say it's enough that you catch, like, a flicker of light as you were kind of that flame kind of emits into your hand, Xanthius, enough for you to catch your eye, and you see Xanthius like holding his hand as flame erupts, and you see that there's, it's black and discolored, and then he quickly tucks it away and is now looking around, and you kind of flip back. Xanthius, can you make a perception check for me? I need to see if uh, I even notice that she's awake, right? Yeah. With advantage, or? Uh, for you, this would not be advantage. Because she is, you were, well, you were yeah, creating yeah. light, I'm like which looking is, around Ophelia very got advantage because you created light in darkness. Yeah, yeah. She's just laying yeah. there, and she can see in darkness as well anyway. Watch this drive. Oh, my God. Uh, I get a 18. That is enough. You catch Ophelia and your eyes meet in the darkness as Ophelia, you, Xanthia spots you looking in his direction. Ophelia just like quickly just like turns over, like rolls over and just like pretends like he did like she's like hoping he didn't see her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I saw you looking at me, right? Yeah. <laughs> um just that that, you know, like when you look at somebody and their eyes are almost glowing in the night because it's reflecting light, you catch that and you know that she saw you. I'd like to go over to Ophelia, please. Sure. Ooh. Um, Ophelia, I know you're awake. No, I'm not. <laughs> Remember stage whispers, folks. Stage yeah. whispers. <laughs> um, uh, why, why, why are you still, um, awake? Oh, just, um, the, the stews made my stomach feel a bit strange. Um, why, what was that? What was, what, what was that light? Oh, the campfire. Um, no. I was standing in front of the campfire, I believe. No, it came from you. Oh, you've seen me casting spells, Ophelia. Mm, why did you, then why did you hide it? Hide it? Why are you keeping secrets? Oh, I'm not keeping... Ophelia, I'm not keeping secrets. I'm uh, just having a restful night. It's um, There's a, a lot happening right now, and, you know, the last couple of nights within the mines, there's a lot going on. I just... Needed a moment by myself in front of the campfire. Um, Are you okay? I'm fine. Tom. Yes. While you're having this conversation, I need you to make another choice. Because along with what you've gained, there is a cost. <laughs> yeah. I need you, I'm going to give you a choice, because this is a very much a role-playing thing. I want you to feel comfortable in the choice you have. But you have to gain a flaw. Paranoia, pride, greed, wrath, deceit, or righteousness. Um, he really feeling... messed your boy up, didn't he? 
I really did. He knew. He knew the consequences. I knew. I knew. You, nobody can see it because, but I'm sitting next to Tom, and his leg has been bouncing like crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, I am. Tech since <laughs> this, this is, started. This is awful. Um, but I knew. I knew the cost when I made this boy. Um, so what were they? Sorry, paranoia, greed, paranoia, pride, pride, greed, wrath, deceit, or righteousness. Now, this is like wrath, right? If I was to pick this, it's not like I am constantly just fury. Not to begin with. <coughs> um, what the hell? <laughs> I. We're just hanging out in Sweet Boy Club. Yeah. Like, you know. I'm. Cocoon. It's great. <laughs> it's just because it's relevant to how maybe this interaction with Ophelia is going to go. Oh. It might influence your... Because this is a role-playing thing. This is going to be like a role-playing thing. Yeah, yeah, It's up to you how much you lean into it for now. Um, but as things continue and this floor may develop and grow stronger. Um, pride, maybe? I think would... Uh... I think that makes sense with your background and yeah. I think I know, yeah. Your flaw then becomes you're very proud that you are, and you can choose some sort of like adjective about yourself. For example, graceful, attractive, talented, artistic, intelligent, or wise. You pick something that you are, you consider yourself, you are very proud of that thing, and you find you strongly dislike anyone who suggests otherwise. So you think about what that is, what you decide what that is, what that yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. you're going to be proud of. You don't have to say it out loud because I almost think that that's better that none just of the, no one on the out. table knows about it. Yeah, but just keep in mind that if anybody... you're going to say I'm bad at singing, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it could be like charismatic. Or you're like, already like this about your eyesight. Could be leadership. That's true. That's true. Your perception. Oh, I thought you meant because I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> no, not That's Thomas. Like, you just a random dunk I on Tom I meant your perception stat. Yeah. No, but it, it needs to be something generic. It could be something like your leadership. You, know, you, you could be very proud that you are a capable leader. Yeah. Or um, something like that. But you don't have to decide right now, but have a think on what that is going to be. Sure, 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 sure. And just note that as a, a, a flaw that you have gained through the effect that is currently <laughs> taking place. Mm. How long have you been awake for, Ophelia? I don't know. What what time is it? I mean, I look up. It's been it's been like hours after the sun went down. It's it's you know probably like three four a.m. Uh, it's I mean we've been here a few hours. I was asleep for maybe three or four already. I don't think I've slept. But Xanthius, I know we've not known each other for very long, but I need. I need to know I can trust you. Before, oh, you can trust me. You can before trust we me. went into Black Rock Mine, we were talking about trust, and I need to know that we're all on the same page. We're all going to the same place. Yes. Whatever happens after that happens, but we're on the road. We're effectively strangers. I have something I need to do that's very important to me, and I would like to complete it. And I wish to assist in that regard. Did I have your back in the mines, protecting you from those creatures when we got those criminals? Same remember? as I had your back. And I expect you to have my back now. Do I have your word? You have my word. That I can trust you. You can trust me. Don't tell the others. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them what? I don't say it in that accent. I don't actually say that at all. That was just no. a joke. <laughs> I'm freaking the fuck out right now. Since we're talking about trust, I should probably tell you how I'm feeling, I suppose. Yes, please. I'd like to know more about you. I can hear heartbeats, Xanthius. Oh, can you hear mine? It's very quick. There's, he, the, I, I, I'm not going to give you like daredevil truth telling ability, but like Xanthius is agitated, clearly. His heart is. Dun, 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 dun. <coughs> There's something else to that beat. Can't place it though. Something unnatural. I can hear you. Is that scaring you? No. Makes me hungry. I see. Well, I, I tried to procure the, you some blood before, remember, with Caliphras. I'm trying. Since I drank from Marion, I've... 
it's, it's all I can think about. Where you're from, do they drink um, human blood there too? Uh, I'm not sure. I've I've heard that it's livestock. My my parents were livestock farmers and livestock traders, and they made a name for themselves for the House of Blood by breeding and rearing animals specifically for that purpose. But that's as much as I know. Whether it came from anywhere else, I don't know. And those that do drink human blood, does this have a similar effect that you're feeling now? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Would you like me to keep this a secret? Yes. Good. Would you mind keeping one of mine? I can hear that you have one. Good. Try to get some sleep. And um, I'll try to find some way to feed you. Um, it sounds like it'll benefit all of us. Maybe not human. Definitely not human. But it won't be the same. There'll always be that hunger, Xanthius. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't know how to solve this for you. I'm not asking you to. I'm just since we're talking about trust. That's just where I want to put my line in the sand, as it were. OK. What is going to happen to Marion, by the way? I don't know. Is, is, is she OK? Uh, I don't I don't know. I think for Ophelia, there is one thing like you definitely know she can't become like you. Like, that is a gift that has to be bestowed. It's just biting and drinking won't do that. You, you would you would know that, at least. She won't be like me. OK, but we'll recover, yes? Maybe. Maybe. Well, let's hope so. But none of mine, please. I'll try. Thank you. Because um, you said before, only if I ask. Has that changed? Yes. No, it hasn't. It has not changed. The last thing I want to do is... Oh, well, not yours. Not mine? No. Good. Or anyone here. Are you looking at your camp when you say that? Yeah. Yeah, but not at the soldiers not camp. Not at the soldiers camp. <laughs> I thought so. Nice. All right. Well, if with that, if you guys want to just head back to bed, like you can do. Unless there's anything else you want to say. Anything you want to tell me? You can tell me. I mean, I'll look around if anyone else is stirring at all. We're having a com like conversation, of course. Ruin is in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'd say at this point, everyone's deeply asleep. This is late at night. Yeah. This is very specific, the reasons you both are awake. I need to trust you. And you can, but give me time. OK. I know that I can trust in you. Good. I need that right now. I don't think everybody else trusts me. I do. Daisy's just scared of you. The skeleton thing is um, worrying. But... Oh, yeah, is he still staring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the whole time. Percival is just holding this above, like, Xanthius and... He is a cloaked now, though. Yeah, he is right, but he's he has not, yeah, talk. free shirt, you know, yeah. hanging out. He can listen, but he can't talk. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Didn't want another thing to swear into secrecy. But don't treat this like a pact. Don't treat this like we're working against the others. Oh, no, I know, I know we're working together. I'll try and find some blood for you. Um... It's okay, I'm not, I'm not asking you to... You know, that's, that's Percival work, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I will I will figure this out. And if I have trouble, I will just talk to you. Just talk to me. And I'll talk to you. Good. Try to get some sleep. You too. Thank you. You guys make your way back and whether you drift off, I will leave up to you. Uh Gruff. You dream. Me? Yeah. Okay. You dream of home. Oh. You remember, you almost hear 
the waves crashing, hear the cries of the ice divers, that solitary, dark period just before dawn when you would set out. You feel that rocking, gentle motion just lulling you. Dream of things out in the deep. You know that there are things always in the deep. They don't come for you. You dream of them, you know them to be there. They prey upon other boats out there and you just watch and listen. The dream is soft and gentle. You sleep peacefully. Do I see my birds? You do. Always with you. Perched on the end of the boat on their little stands where they normally will be when resting. Just watching. But it is a peaceful dream. Rowan, you dream. What? <laughs> dream. You find yourself not yourself. You are watching the pebble swept by the lake, bouncing, singing, calling for its lost friend, pulled away by the thing. You're just almost watching it thrown about the currents. You see trees and sights and sounds pass you in a flurry, but following this little pebble, your dream is also peaceful and passes without incident. You see, you dream. You dream of a, a wheat fields running through them. You're younger, but there's joy. You hear Nim singing, but that that song that isn't, that has no words, that choral, that harmonious kind of chorus singing, uh, the chanting that has no words, but is just sound. And it's joyous and you run free and you sleep peacefully, wake. And you all awake and the next day continues. Oh, <laughs> good morning. Oh, what a lovely, <laughs> no, don't do that shit. <laughs> You travel for a day, uh, and you pass along the road. Nothing of particular interest seems to happen. Um, one thing I do need to do is this is the second day. I need to roll a d20 and see what happens. Nothing of note. No. You guys uh, make your way down the road, travel with, traveling with the soldiers, and again, you find a place to uh, rest. You find a small copse of trees with a small hillock, um, and you set up the camp, uh, much like you did before. Any changes? Do you kind of just want to repeat what you did before, kind of setting up the tarp, setting up a, you know, a simple stew, uh, kind of going about your normal business? Um, it's still light when you begin setting up the camp. Um, Zaron and, and the others uh, kind of mentioned that you should try and set the camp up before it gets dark, and so, you know, the sun's beginning to set, but you take a few hours to begin setting up the camp ready to settle in for nightfall proper. Um, Probably gonna try again. Well, <laughs> as, as you... Challenge me. One thing that does happen, actually, my apologies, Daisy, uh, as you are on the road, Nim speaks to you whilst you are travelling. Um, and Nim is like, little one, there is something we must talk about. You, Do you think you will travel with these strangers for a while? They seem okay so far. Maybe. Do. We should always be careful. We don't know them. Some of them wield strange powers, and one courts the realms of death, which worries me. You're old enough now. <coughs> Our bond has become quite strong. I think I should share some more of my power with you. It's been a while, but I think you're ready for it. And I think you're going to need the tools. If you continue traveling with these people, I think you should be better equipped. You should always be prepared. Sure. I mean, yeah, I am scared of the death lady. And the shiny one's a bit weird. And people keep asking questions about him too. So, but the other two seem fine. They do, and, and we won't distrust them, but we should just be cautious. But you've learned to fight a little, and you've learned to keep yourself hidden. But there are other things. You've been, we've been bonded for many years now. The longer that we are bonded, the more I can share with you and more of my memories return. And you begin to see in your mind, uh, not like a ritual or a spell, but you begin to feel this growing power and you kind of almost see images of yourself 
and a light in your hands begins to form into a shape. You begin to see almost like lines from your eyes projecting out from you, faint lines that seem to reach out to your companions, and you could connect with them if you wanted to, but it's there as a choice when you are ready. Um, and you feel that Nim's knowledge and her memories, uh, their memories are easier to access and things like that. Um, okay. Interesting. When you guys are making camp, I would like you all to make perception checks. Okay. You're really good at this. Will You're you? gonna fucking nail it. <laughs> I, hey, I nailed it last time. Watch this. Okay. Nat 20. Nice. Hey. 16. 16, Nat 20. Uh, oh wait, no, hold on. Perception check, right? Perception. 21, uh, n- no. <laughs> 20, 20, 30, 20. 20, 20. Uh, I got two. 17. 17. 17. Three. Three. I'm very distracted. Uh, 10. 10. Uh, anybody who got over 16, this side Shit. of the table. Uh, yeah, this side of the table. Yeah. The jumper side. Uh, <laughs> the observers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The look, look, and observe squad. Um, the three of you, uh, uh, the authority and the, the soldiers don't really notice this, but the three of you swear, like, out in the woods, like, you're kind of by this, like, small copse of woodland. There's, like, a few hills and things around. You swear that very faintly, just echoing, you know, on the wind, you hear this kind of hideous giggling. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't like that. Don't like that. Don't. <laughs> just briefly, nope. and it echoes on the wind. Nope. <laughs> Why did you hear that? That's how I, I attracted like, Ted. To see. <laughs> That's my main call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Xanthius laughing. <laughs> <laughs> we look at Xanthius. What's Xanthius? Are you laughing? Excuse me, am I laughing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No, I, no did anyone say anything funny? But you heard that too? Yes. Uh, I. Strange. What did you hear? Like a laugh. Hideous. So you sort of like the sergeant and the authority kind of pause. Now all of you, now that it's been drawn attention to, like, and louder, be closer. <laughs> Can I see anything, like... You start looking like around. Dark. It's, it's, it's not quite, it's like dusk, oh, it's dusk. like getting dark, but so you can still look around, but you can see anything. You can see that Bliss is tending to the stew in the middle, like starting to cook the fish and things like that. Um, they're like, what's going on? Like turning around, but yeah. Again, closer now. <laughs> um, Some uh, sort of mischievous. The sergeant's like looking around. He's like, oh, I know that sound. I know that sound. Everyone, get ready! And he's pulling weapons. He's like, oh. uh, as you see, leaping up on top of uh, uh, the hillock, um, you see these grotesque seven feet tall figures kind of emerging from the tree line, two with long bows. Ah. And you can see these hyena-like jackal oh. heads uh, as these bipedal humanoids appear. <laughs> Points down and begins to draw the bow. Fresh meat! They call out oh, as you see yes. a pack of gnolls. No. Okay. So. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. no. Um, and then I've got a couple of NPC allies here as well. <laughs> so it's us. Mind. Us and how many allies? Is it four? Uh, you've got four uh, soldiers and then the authoritor as well. Oh, yeah, one, two, um, we've got Dayron, Cade, Bliss, and Guy, and the authoritor. What's his name? Uh, Daron, Daron, Daron there you go, boy. What a good boy. He's a good yeah, boy. Me. <laughs> I'm a good boy. <laughs> uh, so, whereabouts would you guys like to be placed? Uh, just out of interest. Before I stop putting more things on the bowl. Rowan would have been quite central, handing out stews. So, okay. probably near, near Rowan and Gruff. If if they're yeah, probably nearish. Yeah. Cade over. Cade's like maybe like was helping with the stew a little bit over here. Uh, the Sarge is like moved over to where he heard the sound and is like looking that way. 
Um, Ophelia, Gruff, Xanthius, we're about to see you guys. I think, Percival yeah, as well. looking towards the sound. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, probably there. Yeah, where, where you uh, Yeah, I would have been probably helping to set up not just mine, but Ophelia's bedroll as well with Percival. <laughs> Percy! Percy! What did me? you say? <laughs> Percy! 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 Xan's yeah. near so Percival. Great. I'll be near Xan and Percy, and I'll be okay. looking towards the sound. Okay, like over here? Should yeah. Here? Yeah, sounds good. All right, the two creatures. How many? How many dolls we talking? Oh, there's gonna be a pack. There's gonna be loads. Well, you only see two. Yeah. No. These are cool now. models, by the way. Yeah, look at these boys. <laughs> oh, they're awesome. They're huge. Huge. Um. Oh. Uh, we've got those. No, oh, where's that? Yeah, I think. Do you see oh, more God. appearing from the tree yeah. line? Ooh. Oh, boys. No. Oh, he's got a big old axe. Big axe. Whoa. Oh, no. Okay. I like that, like, boy. Do you like God of War swords? Can we make Blades. friends with them? Uh, you see <laughs> two more emerging. You can see, like, these rusted hatchets and blades. Like, two of them have got these longbows. Two of them have, like, cleavers and rusted, like, woodsman's axes. Um, and then one uh, wielding, like, a, 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 an axe, but it's almost like a staff as well. Like, the top of it's carved, and it has, like, a blade that's been attached to it um, with a leash with two hyenas, like, these abyssal, demonic-looking hyenas. Um... There's a bit of lore in this world. Gnolls are, they are a type of vault spawn. So these are creatures that have escaped a proto-magi vault. Um, and once they get out, they very rapidly reproduce and spread and they can become these like terrorizing like forces that are exist out in the wilds of the world or out in like in between si settlements and civilization. Um, they are believed to have been of, I don't know if any of you, how many of you guys would know this, but it's cool lore, so I'm gonna tell you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Whether or not your characters know this is up to you. Um, Nulls are basically, they are they were created by the Proto-Magi and it's believed that they were created using demonic essence. So they are demons, but they were created here on Althea by the Proto-Magi and kept in the vault. And then when the Proto-Magi were fighting with the gods and things like that, they, Nulls escaped and have now like spread out and manifested. So these aren't like sentient, like, these aren't like goblins who are like sentient creatures with culture and things like that. These are just pure demonic evil that have become mutated and transformed formed like they are these are like evil monsters there's no way of redeeming them they are just magically evil they are not they don't choose to be evil they are just magically horrible monsters cool. so these um, are almost literally vault spawn then they are vault spawn yes they are a type of vault spawn um and with that we are gonna roll initiative here we go, here we go. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cool. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 so no, 2003. Ah, yeah. oh, only three years. Uh, uh, I nearly shit my pants. Sorry? What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> so if it was right, I'd shit my pants. Right. I've got a lot of NPCs on this one. Daisy. Eight. Eight for Daisy. Xanthius. Uh, 15. 15 for Xanthius. <laughs> uh, Gruff. 14. 14 for Gruff. Uh, Rowan. 17. Uh, Thank you for quickly. <laughs> I nearly fucked that up. Uh, for Rowan, 17. And then Ophelia. Four. 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 Perfect. And then again, we will have uh, Percival. You can choose to give orders and he will act after your turn. Nice. Right, in Percival. Um, as a point, I am using Nulls from Matt Colville's book, Flea Mortals. I'm using the Flea Mortals version that of Nulls. That sounds lovely and pleasant. Yes, they're lovely. Um, but How just a, a shout be? out to my good friends James and Matt from MCDM because oh, they've yeah. done it and uh, all the people that worked on it. But yeah, I'm going to use their version of Nulls. What's that name again? MCDM Flea Mortals. It's an awesome book. I wrote some stuff for it. Um, all right. In fact, actually, the first person to act in this, Sergeant Yarrow Guy. Yeah. Sorry. Right, Duke's men, right, come on, soldiers. And he's like calling out, he's like, everybody get ready, arms, you know, form a line. And he's going to call out, um, and he's going to use his action to basically command his troops. Uh, 20. Uh, mm. 
<laughs> oh, everybody charging. Hey, if they're not scared of them, I'm not scared of them. Uh, they're going to form a defensive line, um, and all four of them are going to basically uh, ready their spears and shields, and they're going to ready for a charge. So if anybody approaches within five feet, they're all going to make an opportunity attack against them. So it's like, form a line! Defensive, defensive formation! <laughs> they will form up. Um, that is going to be their turn. The hyenas are let off their leash and just immediately row, 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 come charging towards the line of soldiers. Um, as they do so, they are going to uh, make an attack. They're both going to target uh, Damon, uh, Dayron, sorry, uh, as they do so. Um, the guys are all going to get their, so Bliss and Dayron will get their opportunity attacks, but these hyenas are going to get to act first. Uh, the first one is a bite, is successful. The, uh, the second one is, uh, oh no, it's a group attack, so it is successful. Uh, uh, Dayron takes a nasty bite as these two hyenas like leap onto him, bite like his arms and things like that. But then the two of them, uh, Bliss and Dayron, stab back and their spears, uh, these creatures are actually minions. They just impale the two hyenas and oh, uh, wow. as they do, they lash out uh, and in their death throes, they bite onto uh, Dayron oh. again. And you see Dayron heavily injured now, oh, no. goes down with a bleeding injury. Oh. But Wait. the two hyenas as are- As in down or prone? Uh, um, he is uh, like bleeding out basically. Oh, okay. like, you see him like, as they these hyenas jump on him oh in their Jesus. death, like they're stabbed, and in their death throes, they're like, <laughs> yeah. um, and as they are killed. Um, well, this opened up just pleasantly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you know how like we opened this episode and Mark was like, "What do you guys want to go buy?" And I went potions. Guess I don't, what I I don't remember buy. that. I don't remember this one that. I didn't buy. Well, I, we know the potions are expensive, right? I have some other bad news for you. They wouldn't have had. Uh, when the hyenas, when the gnolls see these hyenas get killed, their yeah. blood kind of like sprays up into the air. They let out this like <laughs> cackling howl, um, and you see these two marauders as a reaction immediately get to move as oh. their allies are killed. Oh five, shit! 10, okay. Twenty. Five. Well, like a blood five, craze. Ten. Fifteen. 25, oh, and they are going to make bite attacks against Gruff. Um, both of them. God damn. Both of them. Uh, a 12 to attack you. Does not hit. This is using your base AC, because obviously you haven't yes. had time to get anything up yet. Uh, the next one is a 23 to hit. Does not hit. Uh, that's going to be four points of, of piercing damage as their death frenzy lets them move and uh, move up to 30 feet, um, uh, uh, and then make a bite attack. Um, and then that is, so that is a lot of things happening at once, but the hyenas are dead, like these minions, the defensive line just immediately impales them and they go down uh, in, a, in a quick flurry. Um, but, 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 but after that we go to Rowan. Rowan. My apologies, Rowan. The archers go Wait. before you. <laughs> Uh, these two archers on the top uh, are going to take shots at uh, Sergeant Cade, and, uh, sorry, Cade and the sergeant uh, with their longbows. Uh, the first one is going to hit the sergeant. The second one is a natural 20 against Ooh, Cade. Cade, oh, no! So no. Cade is immediately downed. Uh, he's bleeding <laughs> out. Uh, the sergeant, who is a bit tougher, is just going to take a normal hit, but a bad hit. The sergeant is immediately bloodied as this arrow thuds into him. Like, yes. They're just normal guards, remember. These guys are just normal soldiers. Um, but like, <laughs> he's like, Cade, Jaren, uh, and he's like, like snaps the arrow, he doesn't pull it out, but he snaps it off and is like, oh, get you for that, you demonic bastards. And he's kind of like revving himself up to attack, but that's the two archers go. Uh, then we go to Rowan, sorry, my apologies, Rowan. Off you go. Rowan's gonna drop his uh, stew. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna get his loot out. <laughs> and he will strum a note uh, which resonates and creates um, a nice green energy beam that hits, um, I guess it would have been Dayron first that you okay. noticed. So mm. healing word on Dayron. Okay. As a bonus um, action to begin. Yep. He will stand straight back up. I'm using simplified rules for these NPCs so they can take a certain amount of hits and any healing will get them up and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, okay. He just oh, immediately stands that, up. Really. Right. Excellent. And then as my main action, I should probably do this, I will step up to Daisy being the closest. Hi. Right next to you. I believe in you. Okay. Let us end this. Okay. And then touch your shoulder, grant you heroism, which allows you to be immune from being frightened. You gain temporary hit points equal to your spell cast ability modifier, which is... Yours. Um, 
plus it's your charisma plus um three so three, three temporary temp HP. HP. HP you get that at the start of every turn so you get to top up the three HP as, as, long, as, temp. as long as you've got concentration obviously yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So main action heroism. Yeah. Bonus action. Oh wait. Bonus action. You cast a spell. Yeah, bonus did, action. Didn't I? So you can't cast heroism. I'm just gonna get my longsword ready and charge in. Okay. Would you want to charge from the ones the on the further left? Wait. Yeah. Okay. Nineteen. Mm. Twenty. <laughs> Twenty to hit. Yeah. Hit. Cool. Cleaves true. Oh, I'm gonna do that two hand if that's alright. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have another weapon. Um, you would put your uh, loot away. Four. I drop the loot. Yeah. Yeah. By the campfire. You drop it? Yeah, I leave it by the campfire. Okay. Sure. Uh, so uh, marauder. So I can two hand quickly. Four points of damage. Longsword sweeps in, cuts, and <laughs> blast, blast. Yes, yes. <laughs> cool. Nice. Uh, anything else on your turn, Rowan? That's it. All right. In that case, uh, we then go to. So there's a lot of initiatives here. I believe Xanthius. Uh, I will nudge forward a little bit. Tell Ophelia to protect Gruff and the guards, and I will go after the archers. Okay. Where would um, you like to move to, by the way? Would you want to just? just... Uh, actually, I've got the range just to stay where I am. I don't move forward. I just uh, yell it around Percival, um, and I'm going to cast uh, Chaos Bolt. Uh, my yeah. beloved, on. Um, now, I've got metamagics now. Yes. Ooh, how are we ruling twin spell uh, on Chaos Bolt? Do I roll the damage twice? No. No, that's not how it works, because you have to make two separate attacks. So I I see, but I would roll the damage So twice. you cast the spell once, and yep. then you get to make two attacks, and if they both hit and they both do their effects or both make saving throws or whatever it is, then the both goes off. And they can both chain, I'd say, yeah, it's a very good combo if it if you get the chain effect or otherwise it's, you know, it's no different to doing a twin chromatic orb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just two separate attacks. Two separate attacks. Nice, fight's over, guys. Watch this. <laughs> so, so uh, A, we A, which will be the one. We'll say it's this one with the actual us. pulling the bow, and then the next one with its. Uh, its yes. Next. So, so this one is eighteen plus four, twenty-two. Twenty-two hits. Uh, so I'll do the damage against this one, Feist. Yes, please. Feist. Uh, that is two d eight plus one d six. Doesn't chain. This is a nightmare. <laughs> um, it is eight fifteen damage. Uh, I will make that. The Can you seven. choose, or does it... Yeah, you have to roll, choose one of the d8s, right? Uh, yeah, so I take the damage number, and that dictates what the damage type yeah. is. I can choose which one. I'll do force for this one. Force, four, 15 points of force damage. You watch as this bolt of energy flies out of Xanthius's hand, impacts into the Null's chest, nearly makes it fall off the hinnick. <laughs> as it breaks its chest, you see, like, ribs snap and everything Aww. else. It immediately bloodies it. Bloodies um, it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And I'll go for number B. Yeah, um, yeah you, you can see that that Null Archer is badly hurt by that, by the way. Cool. I like that. Uh, that is a 15 plus 4, 19. It's... Hit. Oh, baby! Um, oh, my God. Doesn't it chain? Oh, does it... No, Which it's one? 8 and a 6. I need two of the same. Ah. Um, 8 and a 6. I will make this That's poison good. damage, which is 10, 18... Poison damage. 18 points of poison damage. So powerful. You do see. That's just a spell, uh, by the, the way. The poison level does not have as much of an effect against these creatures as ah. you would like. Um, they are resistant, uh, so it's only going to take nine points of poison damage. But you can see that even though this creature it, it's filthy, you can see its fur is all matted, it's covered with like these kind of pustules, like it's still like wretches as this poisonous energy hits it. <laughs> and it kind of coughs up and sputs uh, and spits up like this phlegmy glue heavily badly hurt by this this thing uh, uh, we, uh bloodying it um, hell yeah and that was uh, using a sorcery point for what is it spell. what is it one sorcery point for twin spell or is it two one because it's a level one spell. One, there we go okay all right perfect um and uh that's me all righty goes to my chest so yeah you watch these two archers nearly felled by xanthius's magic as he, he launches these out um amazing stuff gruff you're yeah, next <laughs> Uh, I will um, cast Armor of Oak and Thorn okay. and start armoring myself up. And then I'm just going to straight up attack the guy in front of me. Okay. Um, and that is a 15, 16, 17 to hit. 17 will hit, yeah. Uh, uh, this is not shillelagh, so this is no. normal. No, unshillelaghed. 
Uh, so that is just a straight d6, which is two points of damage. Two points of damage. Uh, is that to the one in front of you? So that's the... Yeah, the one right. with the helmet. Yeah. So boom, you kind of clunking with your staff. <laughs> Hits weak. <laughs> but uh, muscles uh, feast, feast on it. <laughs> Cackling away to itself. Mm. Yeah, that's my go. All righty. Uh, so nothing else in your turn, Gruff? No, that was my action bonus action. I'm not moving anywhere. Uh, all righty. Uh, Zaron Tekis, uh, the authority. Let's go, big boy! One. Uh, he's Come on, son. Kind of ho- hover up here. Um, you see he's going to lean round and he's going to fire out a blast of uh, magical fire as well, uh, firebolt. Um, okay. He's going to cast that up towards the archers, seeing that they're badly weakened. He's going to launch a firebolt out at them. Uh, his unfortunately goes wide. Uh, it's a bad roll for me. Uh, as he, The archer kind of in its weakened state like ducks down, the firebolt soars overhead. Um, as a bonus action, he will cast Healing Word because he used a cantrip. So bonus action, Healing Word, and he will get K'd. Yay! Good news. Yeah. Uh, he kind of mutters an incantation like a prayer. You almost hear him like, Pyrus, help this one. Do not let him fall. And you see this energy, this flame almost ignites in Cade uh, as he does so. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Noll Cackler, uh, which is this <laughs> guy back here, oh, I love that. Um, he is going to... Uh, like, uh, well, first thing he's going to use is his uh, Moment of Brew... Oh, actually, no. Uh, each enemy within 30 feet. So he's going to move up behind like his line over here. He's going to kind of dash for Seeing this defensive line here. Yeah, he can hit all of you guys now. He lets out this fiendish cackle. Uh, Each enemy that can hear him within 30 feet, which is going to be everybody, uh, must make a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, frightening. It is for being frightened, so Daisy's currently immune. No, I'm not, because you didn't cast heroism. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Good shout. Well done. Wisdom saving throws, please. Failure. Pass for my Roll it too. Can I use a fate dice? You absolutely can before you roll, though. Yes, I haven't rolled yet. All right. Oh! I'll be one of those boys. Crucible. My fate is in the turret. Oh, I'll just add more to my lovely pile. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, oh my god, I didn't need it. Uh, but that's fine. Still succeed. That's fate. Um, them's the fate. All right, so let's go around. So, Daisy. Two. Two. You are frightened, I'm afraid, of this of the cackler, the creature with the big axe. Just that one. Just um, that one. But whilst it is within sight, you have a disadvantage on attack rolls as long as you can see it and you can't move closer to him. So I have disadvantage on attack rolls to everyone? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, because oh, you are just frightened in general. Mm. Um, uh, I got a 22. Five on the You face succeed. Off. You are not frightened by this beast. 22. 22. Gruff, you are also... Uh, in, you are not frightened by this creature. Rowan. Five. You are frightened of the cackler. Yeah. Uh, and Ophelia. <laughs> I got 10 and Percival got 14. Okay. Percival's actually immune. Percival cannot be frightened. Woo! He's undead. He is the um, frightener. But unfortunately, you can be. And there is something, some unnatural fear that kind of uh, flows over you as this creature appears. Um, the sergeant, uh, Sergeant Yarrow, is frightened. Uh, like the injury, he's like looking towards it, begins sweating. But the other soldiers, bolstered by being healed and everything else, are just like, uh, like they turn, they are not frightened. Uh, that is his full action. Uh, this time to use his fiendish cackle. Um... The two Marauders. Uh, the Marauders are going to make their attacks against Rowan and Gruffith. Um, uh, so they're going to attack you with their weapons. Um, so a 17 to hit you, Rowan. Yep. And a 17 to hit you, Gruff. Exactly. All right, so they're going to hit you with their uh, rusty hatchets. Ooh, rusty. That's going to be nine points of damage to you, Gruff. I am going to... Uh, sorry, to you, Rowan. Uh, I'm going to spend one of my fate dice to add a d6 to that damage for another five. So that's going to be Ow. 14 total. Uh, but you do get one of your dice back. <coughs> That's a good one. Can you use it on healing? No. Um, and then Gruff against you. Uh, that is going to be uh, b- b- three points of damage against you. Good. Um, da, 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 that it's my temp more. HP. Uh, yep, uh, that is the Moras go Daisy. Um, if I went behind this tent here, you are not moving closer, so you, that'd be fine. Five, ten, twenty-five. Um, if I could go to like the just the other edge of it, 
it actually. Yeah. Trying to work out. Basically, I want to try and get myself in a position where I can not see him. Yeah, I mean, like, but... right now, I'd say that the tent is kind of one of the soldiers' tents is, like, blocking your sight to him. Um... Yeah. Is there any way that I can... No, I still need to hit the same people. I need to hit... The you would be able to... It, well, if you had a ranged attack, you could hit the archers without so, seeing him, but... I want to hit the one in front of Rowan, so it's not going to work, so I might have to just move back yeah, where I sure. was. Or... Yeah, and just have it with if disadvantage. If I was in front of that... If I went behind that tent... Uh, there. So I went the wrong way. If I go behind that, can I block... <laughs> can I cower from him? And yeah! see Rowan... I mean, yeah, you can. I'd say that you can still just about like you are basically like, yeah blocking line of sight. Just like yeah. not see him yeah. at all. I'd say that they yeah, can do that. Yeah. Okay. Can I, please, using what Nim has told me, that I just sort of kind of still learning, mm. but can I form a blade in my hands out of energy? You see this blade of radiant light forms. It's a soldier's blade. This is the blade that a soldier, like almost like a gladius, but it has the right weight, just enough for you to be able to throw with accuracy. Okay, so I'm going to summon this glowing blade and throw it at the one that's attacking Rowan. Yeah, absolutely. And Make I, your attack. Uh, Ooh, so you summon your first radiant blade. Uh, there we go. 23 to hit. 23 just a little bit. Yeah. And I will get You'll sneak, get sneak attack, attack. Yep. because Rowan is. Yep. Nice. So it's This will be radiant damage. 26 plus 3, so one. So four on the attack, and then I get two. Five additional. Another five. For oh, two sneak attack. attack. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that creature is now bloodied um, as the blade flies in as it thuds into its shoulder. And then I will summon as a bonus action a smaller dagger. Probably this looks, looks like, like the one. my dagger. Yes. And then There's I'll almost this sense that that first blade is Nim's. one Nim knows very well. Yeah. This one is one you know very well. Hmm. So this second blade, and you can throw that out. Oh, no, I rolled a four, though. Uh, nine. Just not quite having that That's control fine. over this new power. The blade dis like disappears before it reaches the target. Cool. Not quite able to strike. Perfect. Anything else, Daisy, on your turn? No, I'm done. I'm All good. All right. In that case, we come to the last initiative, Ophelia. Yo. Um, so a bonus action command, uh, Percival, to get out of harm's way. It's a free way. action for you. Just, yeah. So I want to move in behind this tree. These trees are on the western side. Yep. Lovely. Thank you very much. Yep. And then I'd like to, I'm afraid, so... You just can't, so you can't move closer to this guy. No. Um, and you have disadvantage on attack rolls. Against him. Against, Against anything. anything. If, if he's in if your line of sight. Yeah. Right. Um, I think I'll move up a little bit, so maybe uh, five, ten feet. You cannot move closer to him, him. so you can only go Towards like... Towards sort of Gruff and Rowan, yeah, yeah. that way. Yep. Yeah. And that'll still give me 10 foot of reach against the other guys. So you, if you go here, then yes, you are. Yeah, you cool. can hit these two. Perfect. I would like to give that a go then, please. Do you want a uh, bonus action? I'd like to do a bonus thing? action of rage, please. <laughs> In the name of the Great Father, your blood will spill where none shall feast. And then the whip <laughs> activates. The kind of the glowing blood whip emerges. Uh, 9, 10, 11... 12, 13 to hit. Uh, against Marauder, just barely hits, yeah. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Where'd you go? Ooh. Where'd you go? Ooh. Where'd you go? Ooh. Oh, he's down there. I got him. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. A one. So. Yeah. Well, re roll because it went on the floor. All right. It's dirty now. A two. A two. <laughs> so you know six damage plus two, eight damage. Eight and points. And I gain. Well, remember, the six is already included, so you don't add the extra two again. So it's uh, D4 plus. D4 plus two. Right, so four, and then you get the two from the rage, so it'd be six total. Six, yeah. All righty. Uh, but that's still enough, I believe, to, to earn you points. to add a blood point from oh, your new yeah. subclass. No! Oh. Blood point. Uh, yeah, so, so I get three blood points, because what I did 
one damage plus my proficiency? Uh, no, so it's you dealt damage to a creature for the first time, yep. so you get one blood point. One blood point. And then you, the other way you can gain blood points is when you take damage uh, equal to a certain amount. Cool. So it's as long as you, you have to just do a minimum amount of certain damage uh, to gain blood points, and you have to take a minimum amount of damage to earn blood points. Um, right. You might want to either, yeah, keep a tally or a dice or something like that to keep track of your blood points. One blood but point. yes, you watch as the whip kind of cracks across the creature's skin, it splits this Knoll's furred hide, and this blood dark, almost black, you know, blood streaks out. And as it does, you feel that power welling up in you, that strength, almost like the Grave Father is telling you, yes, more, more, um, as you feel it empower you um, as you gain that first blood point. Amazing. Cool. All righty. Uh, we go to the top of the round. The three soldiers are going to see that Rowan just took a bad hit. Uh, Daren is going to turn around. Bliss is going to move around because they're not frightened. Um, mm. They're going to move round and try and help Rowan because they can see that he's the most injured. Unfortunately, the sergeant is going to kind of stagger back a little bit towards these trees, oh, terrified. Okay. Um, but looking at the archers, he's going to pull out like a crossbow and shakily try and take a, a frightened shot towards them. I'll do the sergeant oh, first. Come on, mate. Uh, he has disadvantage. Uh, which he's going to miss, unfortunately. Like, the shaking hands causes him to fire off. You can see that maybe the injury he's suffered as well. Um, but then the other, the other three... Uh, so Dayron strikes the one next to Gruff. Yeah. Uh, Cage strikes the one next to Rowan. Oh, yeah. And Bliss also strikes. They yeah. all hit successfully. Uh, so that is going to be uh, two points to that one. Uh, you can see that, uh, Philia, the one that you uh, just whipped and the one that Gruff's facing, um, taking the moment, Dayron is like, die, beast, and like plunges his spear into its back. And you can see it's barely standing as he's like, pulling his spear free. Um, the other one, which hasn't been injured as much as the one in front of uh, uh, Rowan, uh, is going to take uh, several hits from the two soldiers who jab it with their spears, like thrusting them in, trying their best to uh, get a strike on, uh, both kind of in injuring it and impaling it with their spears. Uh, after the soldiers, the hyenas are dead, the little minions are gone. Um, the archers are badly injured. They see Xanthius as this terrible threat and they are just going to try and fire both at you, sensing this terrible threat, my guy. I'm doing this back at the moment. You <laughs> double keep, keep in mind, you do not have mage armor because you have not cast it yet. That's oh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's that's totally fine. Yeah, just as an FYI. Um, however, because I cast a used a sorcery point, I do have a rune. You have a rune, yes. A rune. Uh, well, the first one, unfortunately, is going to be a 22 to hit. Oh, that just right. gets through. Yeah. Uh, the next one is going to be a 17 to hit. 17. Um, Remind me, how much does shield give? Five. Uh, and what is my AC? Like 11? It will be 10 plus your dex modifier currently. Uh, 10 plus dex, five. Would make it 16. It's not enough. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> uh, from the first attack, you are going to take 10 points of piercing damage. OK, that one I will use the rune on. OK, so uh, to reduce, reduce it. by uh, d6. Let me know how much you reduce it by. Three. All right, so you still take uh, seven. Yes. Um, your speed is reduced by five feet uh, as it kind of is impaled into your leg uh, as it does so. Okay. The next attack deals nine points of damage. Ooh. OK. Uh, so your speed is currently reduced by 10 feet until oh, you gain okay. hit points. Um, uh, damn, OK, that, that, that smarts. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they hit hard. Uh, no, I've already done it. I could have added some more damage to that. Um, don't forget, you guys can spend your points as well, but uh, uh, I'm going to spend mine uh, briefly. Uh, so after those guys, uh, the archers go. Uh, Rowan. Sorry, Mark, just when do we get to save against being frightened? Uh, it is... At the end of our turns, or is it... Yeah. Save ends at end of turn. So, yes, sorry, those of you who have had a turn, you may uh, make a wisdom saving throw to get out rid of the frightened. My apologies. Not just running! You are no longer frightened. Probably not. Roll a four. Oh, probably not. Unfortunately not. Five, yep. Uh, Sergeant also rolls a natural 20. Hey! Nice. As I'm still currently frightened then, I'm going to recoil backward, which would invite attack of opportunity. Yeah, are you sure? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Five feet back. Uh, they are both going to get me to make this, because there's two next to you. Okay. <laughs> the first one is going to be a 23 to hit. Anything above 11. Yep. 11 plus. The next one, it, yep, they're both going to hit. Damn. 
Sorry, Trot. I'm going to do it this time. Dice. I'm going to add a d6. This is the second one I've used against you. Uh, they bite thing. you. They don't hit you with their, flight, their hatchets. They actually sink their teeth into you. The first one is going to be nine points of damage. Oh. Now. And then the second one, I can't add these two, is going to be just uh, four points of damage. I'm down. <laughs> they just like launch onto your body as you go to move away. They just pounce on you, sinking their teeth in. <laughs> uh, that would be the end of my that would go. Be the end of your turn. <laughs> yes, unfortunately it would. Um, Not frightened, no. No. Xanthius. Uh, these archers gotta go, but also the ones above. Um, Rowan, I am going to use a bonus action to spend a sorcery point to increase my runes by two. Okay. Um, and I want to... Is it, can, I can't really, like, stand over Rowan's body, can I? Uh, you can to an extent, like yeah. He's a big, big, he's a big, he's a big lad, boy. But you could try and get in the way. Mm, yeah, I, well, I don't want anything to take a strike against Rowan. Yeah. Um, but before I do that, so I don't have disadvantage, I will cast... Scorching Ray, Ooh. second level spell. Uh, I will do... So you get three beams, right? Yeah. I'll do um, two on the one that I use poison on, so B. Yes. And one on the one that I hit pretty yeah. hard with He's the He's badly force. hurt, yeah. Um, which is three individual yes. attack rolls. It is. Um, so do uh, the one. That's a six. Six, unfortunately, unfortunately. misses. Um... <laughs> iron up those dice now. Sure. Um, but That's what they're there for. They're meant to be spent. That's true. That's true. Now, I'll go for the... Um, I'll see how this one goes against uh, Poison Boy, the first of the two. That is at <laughs> 11. <laughs> <laughs> these beams of fire fi flying over their heads. Fate is suddenly on my side. I'm going to use one of these dice. Sure. Uh, to hit for... Oh, good. I needed it. Uh, 12, 16. 16 hits. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Which um, one is this against? This the badly against injured one. The not badly injured one, okay. the one I used poison on. Okay. Because I tried to hit him with two. Um, 2d6. Oh, yeah, damage. Yeah, it's no, damage. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, he's kill himself in the fucking place. Yes. This one already has. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm bloodied and now trying to stand over Rowan to stop them from attacking him. So um, that is. Good God in heaven, have mercy, Ponce, my soul. I must have Ponce. sinned in a previous life to deserve such pain. Four damage. Four points of fire damage. You had Just a really bad time rolling Raises that. past them, not quite striking true. I don't know, you know fire does, does more against you them. You not have the one. It does not. It does not do much more against them. Uh, anything else on your turn, um, yes. No, that is mine. I've got two runes now. I've, I've done all I can. Tekis. Is going to having seen that these archers are so close to death, is going to. It's going to move up closer towards them. Um, is going to pull. Uh, has like a throwing dagger in one hand, and then with the other is going to uh, blast again with that firebolt spell. Um, and I am going to spend a fate dice to boost their roll because uh, remember these are not just adversarial. Like I can use them for NPCs to help you guys out as well. Nice. Uh, but I'm going to treat them as a player, as if I was a player when I use it that for an NPC. Yeah, move it from the pool. Like, we'll add it to their dead. dice. Uh, I will add to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Cool. It's remember it's balancing it both ways. Yeah. 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 But when you have allies, like it makes sense, right? It also uh, it's to the damage roll though, not to the attack roll. Remember, um, so that is going to be that is going to hit. Uh, so d10, uh, ten plus five oh. on the fate dice. Oh. This archer is annihilated Jeez. as he kind oh, of is sorry. just like <laughs> demon spawn <laughs> and just launches out this firebolt to kill this one. And then his throwing knife um, is still going to hit uh, for six points of damage to the other wow. one as well. Heavily injuring that one as well. Uh, so he kind of and then flicks a, a knife up at the next one, um, heavily injuring it uh, as he turns around uh, and it's just like, Sergeant, get back in the fight! Um, we go from Tekis to uh, Gruffith. Hello. Uh, remind me of spell casting. I can cast a spell in a cantrip. Yes. You can. And so you can uh, you can cast a spell. If you cast a spell as a bonus action, the only other spell you can cast that turn must be a cantrip. Other way around. Can I cast a spell as an action and a bonus action cantrip? No. 
Well, uh, no, yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because there's not that many bonus action cantrip yeah. spells. So yes, you can shillelagh and cast a main spell. Yes, you can. Uh, you can't burn more than one spell slot a turn. It wasn't yeah, shillelagh I, I was thinking of casting. Um, there's not many other bonus action well, spells. No, there's the, well, there's a the thing that you've added to my staff with the bird. Yeah, it's a separate um, thing. It's not a spell. But to, to summon the bird, is that a bonus action? Or it is says that it all there. It says you cast Mage Hand to... It's, mm, Oh, is Mage Hand. It allows you to cast the Mage Hand cantrip as you know it, as if you knew it. Yep, and then the next bit. That would be an action. Yeah, that would be an action, yeah. uh, And then I can do bonus action stuff, so I need to do an action to summon it. that's two separate things. So you can cast, you can use it as Mage Hand, or you can do the other stuff. How do I even just summon it though? Is that just it's a just free... that's part of either casting mage hand or using the other stuff. You don't Excellent. need to you don't need to summon it and then do stuff with it. Okay, well in which case I'm going to reach down and cast uh, cure wounds on Rowan. Okay. Um, and that will heal you for one d eight. Seven Ooh. plus oh god, wisdom. Mm-hmm. You're a druid. Plus three, ten points of healing. Nice. Better healer than I was. And you get your temporary hit points because Oak and Thorn also triggers on healing. Cool. Um, I'll do that in a second. And then bonus action, I'm going to prepare. Uh, so you'll hear a little whistle. Um, and Seren, the uh, green outline of Seren appears. And I will use them to protect a creature within 30 foot of me. Ooh. Um, and that creature is going to be Xanthius. Okay. Oh. Right. So uh, the green cormorant appears. And that lasts until it, the effect triggers, basically, I think it says. Um. Got that bird. <laughs> the birds yeah. are here now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you watch as it kind of flies over and is now flowing around you, Xanthius, like overhead, uh, protectively. Uh, all right. Gruff, excellent turn. Um, nice. We then go to the figures. Uh, the soldiers have gone. Up you get the oil. Have gone. Uh, the cackler. This guy. I don't like that guy. Oh, the frightening um, guy. Yeah. With the yeah. battle axe. He is going to. Mm, so many tasty targets. Uh, you're down, but you've just been healed. Xanthius is looking. You're bloodied, right, Xanthius? You're quite He's hurt. Uh, hurt. Is bloodied less than half? Yeah. 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 It's going to come for you. He smells it in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I stink of it. Uh, uh, he's going to use uh, reek of blood. Moment of brutality to cause. Oh. He's going to have one of the marauders attack you, Gruff. Uh, the marauder takes two d six psychic damage. Oh wait, so he causes he causes his own buddy to take uh, three points of psychic damage. Wow! But okay. then his buddy gets to make a free bite attack. That's okay. really cool. Um, do, 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 do. I think that's still going to miss, though. That's only a 10 to hit you, so the bite tries to... Tis but a scratch! Tis but a scratch, bites into you, and then the uh, cackler himself is going to try and bite into Xanthius. Oh, that, that rolled from a nat 20 to a 2. Uh, so that is only a 6 to hit. Doesn't uh, hit. So, yeah, tries to bite into you, but does... Uh, All right. Is, a successful attack, so he is not successfully attacked, so yes. the bird is still in play. The bird is still in play. Ah. Uh, the bird is still in play. Don't worry, I've got, an eye. I've got an eye on my bird. Um, after the Cactus of the Marauders then get their normal go, um, and so one, they're both going to attack Gruff at this point. Um, in fact, actually, no, the other, the one's going to turn around and try and bite Bliss um, with a hatchet. Uh, so against Gruff, that is going to be a 17. Exactly. So you take uh, eight points of damage. That's it cuts into you with its hatchet, and then the other one is going to turn around to Bliss and misses. Uh, she just nimbly dodges to the side. She's kind of got like a more slender, rapier-like sword um, that she pulls out and is defending herself with. Um, That's the Marauders. We then go to Daisy. Hello. She's no longer frightened. I'm not scared of you. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to step out from behind the tent and just do the same thing again, but to that, the one attacking Zan, yeah. There's, there's the Cackler. The Cackler. Um, and try and there. Just a selection option. And I will try and summon my my radiant blade. blade. My radiant blade. Uh, sixteen to hit. Uh, will still hit. Yeah, still hits that one. Yay. This one hasn't been hurt and does look tougher, bigger and tougher than the others. So, um, six damage. Six radiant plus damage. Two, eight. Other eight, and eight, eight more on top, yeah. so that would be 14 total. Yeah, just one um, of them. So again, um, that radiant blade <laughs> cuts in, <laughs> and and then I'll uh, summon the dagger with the other hand. Sure. And try. 
fail, probably. Ten to hit. Mm, I should have used a fate dice. Yeah, but I almost did. And sadly, I it misses. Uh, again, that second attack, just not quite used to it, uh, dissipates just before it reaches. Anything else, Daisy, in your turn? Um, not for now. I'm good. All right, Ophelia. I would like to uh, roll an attack against the... Uh, let's have a look. One of the boys in front of me. Sure. Nice. I can have a fate dice, please, before oh, I roll. Oh, yeah. Let's again. Thank you very much. Boost that boy for me. Boost that boy for me. 18, 19. 19 hits. Six, 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 six. I'm going to use uh, my Crimson Fury and spend a blood point to add an extra d6 to my whip attack, please. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Mechanics. That is eight on the d4, eight on the... Oh, eight total, four on the d4, four on the d6, plus two... Plus another two for rage. Yep. So ten. four, four, four. Points. Ten. 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 Wait, no, twelve. 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 Twelve, twelve points. Uh, that slays the yes. one in front of Woo. Ruff. I slay the beast. You slay the beast. Yes. Well, first of all, you dealt enough damage, so you gain another blood point because that's the first time I you dealt damage to a creature yes. on your turn, so you get a blood point again. So wait, even if you spend blood points to increase your damage. It self fuels itself yeah. almost. That's yeah, but it's only gaining one. So it's every time. So the way the blood point system works is any time Ophelia attacks a creature for the first time. Okay. So it has to be. So if she gets multi attack, she doesn't get blood points on the second attack. Right. Um, but when she attacks a creature for the first time, uh, if she deals a certain minimum amount of damage, she gains a blood point. Mm. If she takes damage uh, of a minimum amount on her, like for the first time, she also can gain a blood point that way. Okay. And blood points can be spent to do other things. Yeah. Do your thing. Um, uh, Wiz save as well. Yes, please. At the end of your turn. Um, plus one, so yeah, nine. Uh, no, unfortunately, you're still fright end. Um, did you roll with disadvantage on that attack? Okay, perfect, great. Um, so that one is now slain. When that one is slain as a reaction, the gnolls are going to activate their death frenzy. Um, the archer is going to leap down and charge Tekis. Yeah. The cackler is going to turn on Xanthius, and Gruff, this guy, is going to turn on you, and all three of them are going to make bite attacks. Uh, uh, so Xanthius, natural one. Oh, cool. rough. Natural one. <laughs> oh! Uh, poor Zeron Teclis uh, is no. an 18, it hits him. Uh, he's <laughs> going to take a hit. Uh, so, eh. <laughs> Xanthius is like, yeah. That's yeah, a big hit. Not, not too worried about that. Um, <laughs> so okay, a time. Oh, I missed it. Oh, whoops. <laughs> With that, uh, because we do have to cut the stream because we've got a lot of other stuff to do, we are going to mm. have to end this part mid battle, unfortunately. That's okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> so it's it's time. Time. I did not even notice the time. No, no we, we were to... wrapped up in that. Yeah. Uh, so on forward, so thank you very much for joining us, but that is going to be the end of uh, this episode of High Rolls, episode five of Althea. Uh, uh, I have to come up with an episode name, but I will do that. Oh, uh, no. No, it's not going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, that. But yeah, thank you for no, joining please us. please have mercy on uh, <laughs> We will see you uh, in the future for more Althea the Dragon Empire. Hell yeah. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. See ya. Bye now. See ya. Bye now. <laughs> um, hello, everybody. We're live. We're live. We're live. It's really us. I can pull up chat and everything. Prove it. Um, prove it's live. Uh, how do I prove it's live? I go to chat. I'm gonna read out thirties. Yeah, 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 read out thirties. Because uh, I don't know how to get them up, so somebody else is gonna have to do that. I got oh, it, boy. Thomas. He's got it, boy. Got it. Hi, Nolas. Hi, Nolas. <laughs> Now, of course, good. as you Very all know, uh, we have not been live for the last three weeks and we have not been reading donations <laughs> since episode one, so I will have to be catching up on all of those, as promised! Um, do it. If, that, if that's cool, if that's chill, you guys should call and chill. Well, just that. do it. Oh, I'll do it then. <laughs> I'm going to prove I'm live right now. Mad Catter 365, great episode today, High Rolls team. Thank you very much. It is a great episode today. I'm proving that we're live! Okay, well done. We, we recorded it. chat, it's though. Oh, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Um, that. I need to remember when this goes live to be that username and put that message in at yeah. exactly yeah. that time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jolene Core underscore music's in chat. Hi, Jolene. Hello, bud. Another alt of mine. <laughs> um, so this is three weeks ago uh, for episode two. Uh, we had a donation from Big Goth Booty GF, uh, which <laughs> says, it. We'll watch the VOD later. Been DMing my first campaign for the first time since September. Uh, it would have been impossible had I not found this show. I love you. K okay, bye. Thank you. Love ya. Um, Natalie June um, 
stopped watching a year ago because I become depressed to the point of not being able to enjoy many things I love. Oh. But now I've got a new oh, job boy. and new meds and a future to look forward to. So here's yeah. to a new start for all of us. Much love to my boyfriend Sam, who I met in the High Rollers Discord. Aww. Aww. Yeah, wow. And has given me so much to live for. Very okay. nice, very nice. Bringing um, people together. Uh, ba -ba 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 Hypnodia. Um, second episode, second dono. <laughs> uh, couldn't be more excited to follow live uh, this new joint journey of yours. Happy High Rollers Sunday. Lots of love from Italy. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Um, Gothic Kitty 1313, uh, calling it now. This is pre recorded, as I can see, re in the viewer list. Yeah, you were right. You were right. <laughs> you were right. Yeah, yeah. Look, we had to pre record a bunch of episodes because a lot of stuff was going on, and also it was the start of the campaign. We wanted to make sure everything was everything right, there weren't right. any issues. It was pre record or nothing, my dudes. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah. Um, yeah Mathan Bjorn, uh, first time live. Now I can finally say how much I loved Erois. Very excited for Althea. Oh. And though I still miss the old characters sometimes, I'm loving the new ones already. Aww. Enjoy the new campaign. Also, happy birthday, Katie. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That yeah. was the 13th of November for a um, Now, this is a concerning one. Uh, okay. It's a message from Althea Anti-Dragon Movement. <laughs> oh, that's pretty bold. Oh, mm. bold. Um, heed these words, my words, my brothers and sisters. The overgrown lizards have grown fat on the tithe, complacent with our subservience. Yet we say no more. The beasts poisoned our minds to think them great and divine, yet beasts they remain. Dragons be damned. So there's a, there's a movement happening in Elthea that we need to take care of, my guys. Sounds pretty non-canonical to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's an anonymous donation here that says, just finished a two and a half hour drive. This live stream was perfect company. Maybe for the best I was alone because I screamed so loud when Ophelia raged. Yeah, yeah that's the first big moment. Pretty big moment. A lot of big reactions to that, I think. Yeah. That was the most unexpected That's reveal. That was the actual yeah, yeah. unexpected oh, reveal. Oh, we all feasted on that. Yeah. I think everyone here was delicious. like, mm, I was there in chat when it happened as well. I had to see the reaction to it. It was so oh, good. Yeah. Um, pulsing, glowy, necromantic vampire barbarian might be the best character concept in history. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> there you go. Um, there is... Now we're on to episode three. Uh, Jacob Chickpea, 3v1, who would win? Smeek, Bing Bong and Gurley versus Zim Zam Zembalor. Oh, Zim, Zim, Zam. Zim, 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 Zim Zam. He's a wizard. He's a demi. He fireballs them. With no morals. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and they're all squishy little nothings. Yeah. The man, I, the man, what did it, it was like Cone of Cold. Yeah. <laughs> you just Cone of Cold him. He's a big boy. Yeah. Um, big Goth Booty GF again. Hi, yeah. another week, another bit of love. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Um, Shannon, hey, Rollers. I'm going hey. to be in VOD Squad. Just wanted to say... Uh, we're sorry not to see you at Wales Comic Con, but fully understand why you decided to leave. Thank you um, hope you will still go to a different con in the future. Much love. Thank yes. you for always yeah. bringing joy. Thank we're you. always keen to do like events and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, just we won't go into it, but yeah, like uh, ones that have you know where we can feel comfortable and safe and 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 all valued. Right. Calm down, Matthew. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um, but yeah, we we do want to. I mean, I'm almost always at like things like MCM London Comic Con, even if I'm just there on my own, just doing my own thing. Totally. Always happy to say hi. But I think as a group, we definitely want to do more yeah. things. And we've got plans. some exciting plans. We have plans. We have plans. plans. Don't, don't worry. It's not and that's all we're saying on that. Carry on, Tom. <laughs> um, Califax. Uh, hello. This is my first time watching High Rollers. I've spent the weekend watching the first two episodes and I'm looking forward to watching the next one soon. Love all the characters and it's made me super excited for my current D&D &D campaign I'm in. Nice. Oh, very um, nice. Very, very cool. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 Hench Wench. Um, Cam and Mailer cosplay. Yeah, I was going to say Hench Wench is uh, the Cam and Mailer. Yeah. 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 Uh, great to meet you at this weekend oh, and yeah. loving the new campaign. Um, I think we'll have to work on Gruff and Ophelia cosplays. Ooh. Maybe for the next con you're at. Watch this space. I do. I mean, a Gruff, like, a, especially with the big with beard and yeah. stuff, yeah. that would be pretty epic. Love to see a gruff make display. it so. Yeah. Yes, make it happen. I love you guys. You're the best. You are yeah. really awesome. Yeah. And you um, look incredible. Lepataya, I believe, maybe, uh, probably not. Uh, so excited to join you live for this campaign for the first time since Lightfall. You've been a great wow. inspiration and my gateway drug into TTRPGs. Nice. Thanks to you all. I have my first time DMing coming up Ooh, next week. We love it. Uh, 
Warhammer Fantasy RPG. Oh, I love it even more. We love to see a different TTRPG. We, we love it. Um, one thing I want to talk about, just talking about the, the cosplays as well, uh, we have a new channel in the Discord for cosplay discussions. Yeah, we've had quite a few cosplayers yep. who are really excited to cosplay for Campaign 3. Uh, I know my friend Anya and Eve are working on some stuff Sweet. along with Sarah as well. Uh, yeah. But they're also helping each other. Loads of people are sharing tips. Yeah, yeah. Come on in. You need help making something for your cosplay or costume. Cosplay doesn't even have to be high rollers. You want to yeah. you wanna get started, you know, d dip your toe in. Like, you know. I don't think it's budget cosplay. This guy knows. Warbler. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, we got a channel for that in our Discord, along with fan art and everything else as well. Yes, we do. And Lepitaya, uh, I, I fucking love the Warhammer Fantasy roleplay game. Yes, so yeah. so you would have so played it by fun. now. And we will I, return I want, to we that. We do. I really want to get back to it because it's a really fun module. Um, there's also uh, the new Imperium Maledictum, which I really want to do as well. Yeah. I've got some plans. <laughs> for that so so excited you got two books for it shut up <laughs> <laughs> now, this might have is... forgotten oh, I bought one out. might have forgotten we had one already this is uh, episode five four. Oh, that last week uh, last week uh, Exiled Saint uh, can't join live uh, got to catch up on last week's week. episode just one question is there any news on merch returning no no that's not it. immediately. It's something that I think we want to get back to, but it's complicated and we want to make sure we do we it don't right. We have and... a good supplier yeah. at the moment and it needs to be high enough quality that we feel yeah. like we want to sell it to you guys. So yeah. Not right now. Yeah, but not right now. But also, uh, hopefully in the, the future. Space. Yeah. Watch the I space. Would say that uh, right I don't know now. if I've no, missed anything recently, <laughs> but I would like to see what I can get. Thanks for these glorious campaigns and stories. Um, no, so support us on Patreon. I was gonna say, yeah. Actually, uh, if you want to, if we can't buy, we don't have merch. But if you want to support us, Patreon, YouTube members, uh, all that stuff. Patreon's the best. But if you want to support us, then that's a great way of doing it. Yeah, um, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, um, Alka Hest, uh, loving the new campaign so far. Can't wait to see where it all goes. Um, spinach, uh, spinach. <laughs> dear Deep Glimmer Guards, Yogo's Granny here. Please oh, deliver this traditional meal of rat skewers to my poor imprisoned grandson. Yeah, it's totally skewer sticks in there. Tiny metal innocuous skewer sticks. An old family tradition. Yaga the Yaga. Mor y Yaga the Moray. 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 Yeah. Eel. Oh. It's split across two separate lines. It's a hot look. It, you, uh, it's try, a big reference just, to episode Just try four. and do what I do, all right? He didn't even tough, need it, okay? though. <laughs> he didn't need it, though. He broke out on his yeah. own. He's fine. Yeah, yeah he got out. Hey, look. Um, and uh, in between those two episodes, last one and this one, uh, a Patros miner uh, donated with Skibbity Donation. Um, so <laughs> if you're looking for someone to ban... <laughs> I don't get it. That's just incredible. <laughs> Skibbity Donation. Skibbity Donation. Just on their own. In Love between it. episodes. <laughs> Why not? Skibbity Donation. Yeah, just strolling by. <laughs> There's a reference to say. I was like, I don't get it. I, mean, it's I, don't, I don't understand it's these kids. Have, have you seen Skibbity Toilet? Don't, no. Don't. Actually, do keep bringing up Skibbity Toilet because that's SEO boosting right there. Skibbity Toilet, Skibbity Toilet, Skibbity Toilet, Skibbity Toilet, Skibbity Toilet, Skibbity Toilet. Yeah. Um, Thank you, SEO. Thank you, SEO. And today we had a donation from a Hypnodia. Um, this How did is, they break through? This is straight to changed, us. This, we should have changed the links. How well, did they break through it? Well, they've donated this straight to us instead of uh, to Naughty. the Jingle Jam thing, which is fine. Thank Naughty. You very much. Thank you very much. Still appreciate it. Still appreciate it. I don't um, know. Uh, Hypnodia says, Hi Rollers, you are the first I have financially supported ever. Aww. Discovering Aww. you in these months has been such a pleasure. Thank you for making my day better. So excited to follow live this campaign with you. Salute from Italy. Thank you very Aww. much. Thank we you. love it. Thank you, Hypnodia. And uh, Dapper Metroid, um, Gruff, Fishmonger, I'm going on a journey. I need your freshest fish. Fishmonger, my fish are too fresh for you, traveler. <laughs> <laughs> good, reference. good reference. Very good. Um, and uh, I believe that is everything. If there's any I've missed, um, Stream Elements, the reader for this, um, sucks, <laughs> frankly, dick. Uh, <laughs> so, Don't worry. So uh, if, if there are any I've missed, uh, let the mods know and they will let me know to read them out yeah. next time. How are um, we doing on the old jungle gym? We have made... Jungle gym! 5,111 pounds. Holy shit. Bam! I have a, a bunch of, of messages to read out if my you first to me. Uh, our top donor, will not surprise you to know, is Recall. Recall. Oh, what a surprise! Recall 1,000. Oh, Recall 1,000 pounds. Thank you. Uh, and they say, oh, my stream, my, my fresh human, if no. 
My favourite stream is supporting my favourite charity in the Jingle Jam. Oh. No brainer. Have some money. That's amazing. Nice. I love your recall. Nice. Thank you, thank you, my dear. Fake Namington says Calm does great work, and it's part of the reason I'm still here today. Glad to see them getting more love, and as always, big Ooh. love to the High Rollers crew. Thank you very much. Nice. Thank love you to calm. Miles Roy, who says here's uh, to putting an end to sad boy gamer hours. Bless you. Um, and thank you to Anna Troy's name is cut off, but I think it's two something. Uh, Calm isn't my tr uh, choice of charity, but High Rollers definitely is my choice of fundraiser. And I trust y'all picked a good one. So here's 50 dollar dues. And I've been watching since Lightfall and missed most of a rose. And I'm happy to be here for the beginning oh. of our theater. Well, we're happy to have you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you to Heal Mike. Um, I've been watching a long time. Always love this time of year. Jingle Jam is an amazing event, supporting a lot of great causes. Happy to be a part of it. Thank you to Weavy, who says, great cause, great group, group of players. I almost said group of players. Uh, thank you to really? Gareth W for yeah, donating. Really thank really you for, to Twist of Creatures for love watching High Rollers and Yogg's Cast. I think these fundraisers, I love these fundraisers each year. Well done to everyone. Thank you for all the good times and the memories. Heart. Uh, thank you to Fizzlebits, who says, for the grave, father. Woo! Thank you to Steve for a half hundo to calm and saying, love my Sunday evenings. <laughs> <laughs> love my Sunday evenings listening to your adventures while painting my minis. A rose was amazing, oh, such nice. a fab story. Looking forward to seeing where this campaign goes. Much love to you um, all. Kiss, hug, kiss. Uh, I Dunny Ken with 69 pounds and 69 oh, nice. pounds. That's the sex number. <laughs> 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 Thank you to DVD01, CD01 for £25. I recognise that name. That's an old name, I recognise. It is. Mm. Thank you to Ducky, uh, who says thanks for the stories. And Tom, why... Ducky um, from NCIS. I love that guy. What did you do to this sweet boy's backstory? I love it, and I do the same to my characters in DVD, but I now know how my party feels. Hope you all have the best of times rolling <laughs> dice. Thank you to Esty Villor. Uh, love your art, Esty. Um, yeah, love love you, nerds. A fantastic year of endings and beginnings. All the best. Thank, Thank you, you to much. Hanami hey, Ninja. Ayla art is still my background on my computer. Mm, 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 mm. Esty Villor, you should know that. Thank you to Hanami Ninja, who says, praise God, bird. Thank you to... <laughs> so, yeah, Godbird is a reference from one of my D&D in a castle games. Oh. 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 So, I heard. noted. I heard. Fucking uh, Godbird. Thank you, Anonymous, for the £50 to come. Thank you to the Sim Demon for £100 oh, to wow. come. Wow. 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 Thank you to Twisting String, who says, been watching since fall 2020. I see you're an American or a Canadian. Um, and I'm completely amazed by your gameplay. Can't believe uh, how great the new campaign is already. Thank you to Lauren Chen Mi, who donated £70 uh, to come. Yeah. Thank you to Anonymous. Thank you. Uh, wait, no, thank Recall. I've already thanked you for the thousand. I can't thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you, Recall. Yeah, two. Thank you. Yeah, two. Thank you. Come on. Thank you to Risa. You know what? Actually, for Recall, uh, a little special saying. Can I? Can I get? Uh, can you just repeat what I say for Recall? It's like a, a celebration. If I say, huzzah! 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 He loves it. They'll Sorry, love it. Love Rico it. will love it. Crispy's going to love it. Yeah, Crispy's It's very well deserved. It. You're welcome, pumpkin. Thank you to Risa. <laughs> Kind of like Hazar, Risa, for the donation. Uh, thank you to Rowan C. Here. And Rowan donated. Oh. Uh, thanks, um, thanks for Rowan. everything you guys do. I don't have much, but I always try to donate to the Jingle Jam each year. Loving Campaign 3 so far. Haven't been able to play D&D myself um, for a few years, so it's great to watch. Oh. Thank you to Hal 40 k uh, for the half hundo to come. Love high rollers and love fundraising for such an ace cause. Thank you to K kill killer kitty killer kitty i see what you've done there oh eight and thank you to guzmel uh hi rollers lol uh sadly missing out on the stream this week but i knew i couldn't miss jingle jam despite not being from the uk myself i've been following the work that calm has done for such a long time and it's a great cause awesome. love to you all thank you to camelos been watching high rollers since the start of lightfall and mark has always been an inspiration to me as a dm Thank i'm struggling much. with making my own campaign due to mental health issues so i felt compelled to donate to this awesome cause Awesome. Thank you to Madone24. Uh, enjoying the new campaign so much, I've begun re-watching Arois. Uh, oh, thank nice. you to Rockin' Gamer. Thanks for raising money for such an amazing charity. And thank you to Tordial Corgi 52 um, I don't know how many of these are, by the way. There might be a lot. New Plays Games. Happy to support the cause. Happy Jingle Jam. Thank you to Random Kelsey. Thank you to Anonymous, who says, Thank you for being my favourite D&D actual play. I uh, watch all of Lightfall. Wasn't able to get into a Rois a ton, but I'm loving Althea so far. Uh, and all the PCs are excellent. Happy Crimbo and Jingle Jam season. Thank yeah. you to Screaming Cur... It cuts off at KO. But they just say, ah! Thank you, to, <laughs> thank you to Zed Cactus for the HUN! 
Fernando Thank to you. come. Thank you. Thank you to Dr. Diarrhea. Uh, <laughs> MD. Don't you forget the MD on his name. <laughs> Uh, thank you to uh, Style Zoa. Thank you to Anonymous for the half holiday. Thank you to They Chris. didn't spend all those years in medical school for you to forget the MD. <laughs> thank Dr. you to Crispy. Crispy. MD. Uh, with a two hundo. Wow. Um, wow. A great Crispy. group donating to a, a wonderful charity. Happy to support on behalf of High Rollers. Thank, thank you for all that you do for those in dire need. Sorry and if I could ask... <laughs> if I could ask for Crispy... Huzzah! 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 Crispy, you love that. Thank you to Sailua, who says a donation from the House of Blood. Oh, oh we love very it. good. Thank very you. Good. It's very good. All blood. Thank it's you. not in the box. <laughs> oh God! Thank you to the Storm Wizard. <laughs> Here's to another fantastic adventure through a strange new land. Thank you to Shina Taylor. Thank you to Green Knight. Oh, Green Knight. Uh, Ziwana, who says amazing charity. Thank you for helping so many people. Thank you to Anonymous, who said join this wonderful community after seeing the Baldur's Gate three streams. Oh, nice. hey. I'm really impressed with the DM. Hey, oh my god, that's him! That's me. So happy to... I'm Big Bog. So, well, hold on to that. <laughs> so happy He's to help it. my new favourite people raise money for a good cause. Congrats on the canon Bing Bong. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you to Michelle for the half hundo to come. You guys are amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for being there for all the people struggling. Thank you to Scott Man of the... I'm going to presume North. Um, love you, lads and lasses, and hope to keep seeing you around a lot longer. Lots of love from Ayr. Uh, thank you, a couple of anonymouses. Thank you to Fox Hunt, who says, love you all. Um, thank you to Hats for Llamas uh, and Tea Turtle. Hi, hi, Rollers. I've been here watching the VODs and my pod, uh, podcast since the first episode of Lightfall. You guys were my gateway uh, podcast into d and and I'm glad to see that you're supporting suicide prevention as I almost lost a friend to that two years ago. Uh, thank you to a whole bunch of anonymouses. Ligaratus, Wavebearer, Valena, or Valana. Yeah, Valana. Another anonymous. Thank you to Fractal, who says, It's snowing, it's Sunday, it's Jingle Jam, High Rollers is on, and my birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank awesome. you to Linda the Free Chronicle, I Sotty, who did a 500! Holy shit, I believe they did a price match, um, or donation oh, match. Oh, wow. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you to I Sotty. Thank you to Tegan, who says, The past few years have been awful! But you lot are guaranteed to make so many smile. Hopefully one day no one will suffer alone. But until then, we do what we can. You're not alone, you're loved, and you deserve to be here. You yeah, absolutely, absolutely do. Absolutely. Thank you to Duck Tees. Uh, always donate to Jingle Jam. Always good causes. Thank you to Nightjar, who donates with a heart. Oh, thanks, Nightjar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you to Warden. Uh, we're almost there. Thank you to Colonel XB. Thank you to Garden Chaos. Lots of love to those, um, all those. This helps and everyone taking part in the Jingle Jam, the High Rollers, and all of the viewers. Thank you to Crash Canister. Thank you to Samo, who says thanks for all you have done. Clear skies. Thank you to Vukith, a uh, couple of anonymouses. Lazy Timmy, I forgot to leave a message before, so have another donation oh, for a good cause. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. After I nearly lost my life and losing my father earlier this year, I can always count on everyone at the Yogscast to brighten my days up. Keep up the amazing work. Big love Thank to you, ladies. Thanks very much. A huge shout out, by the way, to Muses Wim, who um, almost yes. broke the counter while we were offline. Yes. They weren't even, you know, weren't even advertising yet. the fundraiser. Sure. And they did um, a donation match and ended up donating five hundred pounds. Oh, thank you. I've never needed the services that Calm provides, but as someone who's experienced su suicidal ideation my entire life, mm -hmm. it is a comfort to know that help is always available if I do need support in the fight against my own mind. Yeah. Big love absolutely. to you. Oh, thank yeah, you as well. Absolutely. Uh, thank you to Nathalia, haha, -ha, Eagle, Honky Conky, Linda De Ridge. I love high rollers and always try to give the jingle jam. Do you give to the jingle jam? So combining the two and helping to prevent suicide is the ideal scenario. Happy jingle jam, everybody, and keep rolling high. Thank you to Chatty Dash, who says great work for a great charity. Uh, thank you to yes, Lazy Timmy. So Lazy Timmy actually donated um, about 160 pounds, I believe. Nice. Yeah. Thank you um, so much. Thank you to Lunacy and Pirates for clear skies ahead. Thank you to Ren Willow. Uh, to Nate, to Trifler, to Emma Prude, to Cameron, and to Vince Rex. Bam! Woo! Well done. Okay. Well done, Kim. And that is for this week only. We will be doing this again next week, next next week. week as well. Yeah. So hopefully we will hit our target Smash of sex target. number sex number zero one. Let's, Smash that let's target do it. like you would the like button. Yeah. Um, enjoy your game collection as well. Hey, enjoy one your last awesome thing. collection of games. I'm Tom. Afraid. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, uh, drop a fat beat for me and I'll do the hard part. <laughs> Gift subs, Fiend Wolf, Christy, Dark Lord Gamer, Malbow, Slower, Shagon, Hi A, Iron On, Darth Dave, Brizzy29, Being Wolfie, Blind Meridian, Crispy, Scale Mate, Omega Sama, One Man Shrimp, Dead Cactus, Beachy.
Sterling, gotta catch more, gotta catch more. <laughs> <laughs> Being wolf wow. crazy, crispy, myvo, scale mate, Yagmas, Yagmas, Matsuri. <laughs> crispy, he ate, hey. Huzzah! <laughs> Fox hunt, burying, crazy Ivan recall, my MK13 wolf, that's it. Song's over. I wanna be the best <laughs> there <laughs> ever was. <laughs> to beat the rest of the <laughs> Got to gift them all, got to gift them all. Thank you. Uh, Speaking amazing. of, one last shout out to the sponsor of, the, of this episode, yeah. Afterlight Comics. Do go check their Kickstarter out, Tales Unbound. What is it? A deck of beautiful cards based in British, North American, and Slavic folklore. And I want this deck. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. And it can only happen that. if you make them hit their total. So go, yeah. so click hit link, that total. hit that click total. That make it have yourself beautiful D&D Get your cards. card. You're Big welcome, After Light Comics. Thank you for joining us in chat as well. Thank yeah. you. Um, but yeah, we will be back next week live to Woo! continue our adventures here in All Fair. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>